Okay, we're live on YouTube. Great. Good morning and welcome to the April 12th, 2022 public hearing and public meeting of the Landmarks Preservation Commission. We will begin by taking attendance. Mark, will you call the roll? Chair Carroll. Here. Vice Chair Bland. Here. Commissioner Shamir Barron. Here. Commissioner Chapin. Here. Commissioner Chen. Yeah. Commissioner Devonshire. Commissioner Goldblum. Here. Commissioner Gustafson. Here. Commissioner Jefferson. Here. Commissioner Lutfi. Commissioner Holford Smith. Here. Good morning again, and welcome to the April 12th public hearing and public meeting of the Landmarks Preservation Commission. This meeting and hearing are being held via Zoom and live streamed on our YouTube channel. So if you would like to testify on any of the public hearing items, you may do so by joining the Zoom meeting at the estimated time shown on our uh, agenda, which can be found on our website. And if you would just like to watch the proceedings, you may do so on our YouTube channel. And we'll begin this morning with our public meeting agenda, which are items that have already had a public hearing and for which we've already heard testimony and the commissioners have given comments and the applicants are back today with revisions in response to those comments. And then we will move to our public hearing agenda to review new applications for work on designated properties. And with that, I will turn it over to Corey Harala, our Director of Preservation. Thank you, Sarah, and good morning, everyone. We'll start today's Preservation Department agenda with public meeting item number one, LPC 22-05216, an application for a certificate of appropriateness in the borough of Brooklyn, block 386, lot 32, 184A Bergen Street in the Borum Hill Historic District. This is a modified late Italianate style row house built 1873 to 1874. Uh, and the application is to construct rooftop and rear yard additions and alter the rear facade. This was last presented at the public hearing of April 5th, 2022. No action was taken at that time. I believe the staff will do a brief intro before turning it over to the applicant for the presentation after we open the proceedings. Okay, thank you, Corey. And let's open the proceedings now so that can be done seamlessly. So Commissioner, oh, Commissioner Lutfi has joined us. Commissioner Lutfi, would you make a motion to open the proceedings? So moved. Thank you. And Commissioner Chapin, would you second that motion? Second. All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, so the applicants may speak after the staff introduces the project. Good morning, commissioners, Dean Posner, preservation staff. Um, Ruben, if you could please just move to the first comparison slide. Thank you. As Corey noted, this proposal was last heard at the public hearing of April 5th, 2022. An axonometric showing the previous proposal is in the upper left-hand corner of this slide. At the hearing, all commissioners were supportive of the rear yard addition as presented. However, however, several commissioners had concerns regarding the visibility of the proposed occupiable rooftop addition. Some commissioners expressed openness to a bulkhead instead of an occupiable addition. There were also concerns regarding the proposed enlarged door opening at the visible rear facade. The applicant has made revisions in response to these comments and is here to present their updated proposal. So Ruben, you can go ahead and unmute yourself and state your name for the record and you can begin. Ruben, you're muted. Okay, sorry. All my controls are not visible. Uh, uh, good morning. I'm Ruben Jackson from Archimuse, the architect for the proposed renovation at 184A Bergen Street. And I'm presenting again on behalf of Doug and Jordan, the owners of the property, who are also here with us today. Um, we appreciate the commissioners ta taking the time again this morning to review uh, the proposed changes to our renovation that we've made in response to our meeting last week. To quickly remind everyone of the existing conditions and context, this slide shows the historic photos of the building, the primary facade as it stands today. Next slide shows the existing conditions of the rear of the house. And the next shows uh, additional context in the backyard. Um, slide five shows the block plan and the two gaps, one on Bond and one on Wyckoff 
which create minimal view corridors to the rear facade of 184A Bergen. Slide six, again, this is an axon drawing of the house as it exists in the lower left. Um, the renovation is proposed last week above that and the revised proposal on the right and larger. To be responsive to the commissioner and community feedback, we've completely removed the rooftop extension and replaced it with a bulkhead for stair, ac stair access to the roof. We've eliminated approximately 175 square feet of space on the rooftop or roughly 80%. Um, the roof, rooftop space um, inside is no longer occupiable. We've offset the bulkhead from the back of the building as much as possible to reduce visibility from the gaps on Bond and Wyckoff. Um, also on the second floor, as Dina noted, we've removed the, we have uh, removed the French doors and are proposing a single door in, uh, a, in a lowered uh, existing window opening at the second floor. Uh, this, this slide seven shows the elevation from Bergen Street. Neighbors active chimney uh, at 184A Bergen on the west side or the right will be raised in accordance with building codes to be three feet above the bulkhead. Um, just a reminder, as an elevation, this, would, this view would never be seen from public areas and the flue extension is not visible from the street as you'll see later in the slides. Slide eight shows the existing rear elevation. And the next shows the proposed rear elevation. The elevation shows the rear addition and bulkhead. Note the change made to the door opening on the second floor. Next slide 10 shows some samples of the materials as we plan to see, as well as a bird's eye view rendering in color to give better sense as to what the renovation will look like. Slide, this slide shows the revised plan on the roof, which removes the penthouse entirely and replaces it with a bulkhead as discussed prior. Note that the interior ceiling height of the bulkhead is proposed to be eight feet. This slide just shows the mock-up we constructed in preparation for the meeting. Uh, we used most of the framing from the old mock-up and changed the orange mesh netting to outline the bulkhead contours and the revised fencing. This slide shows the visibility from Bergen Street from the farther perspectives. Given that we are no longer raising chimney flues on the east side of the house, there is no longer any visibility from Bergen. And again, 14, this slide shows more views from Bergen more closely, closer to the house. And you can see there is no visibility of the flues. The next few slides show the view from Bond Street. This first view is the existing maximum point of visibility on the back of 184 Bergen. The small vacant lot being used for parking allows a view of 184A's rear facade, as you see in the photo, between the four-story apartment building to the left and the white rear facade of 186 Bergen to the right. There's a lot to see from this vantage point. Your eyes are drawn to the four-story apartment building on the left and the thousand foot Brooklyn Tower and other skyscrapers of downtown Brooklyn to the right and above the houses. This slide shows the same view of the original rendering proposed of the rooftop extension last week. And 17 shows the view with the revised proposal of a bulkhead. You'll note the eyes are still drawn to the much more prominent buildings in the foreground and background. The visibility of the bulkhead represents significantly less massing than the original rooftop addition. In terms of visibility from the street, it will be comparable to a chimney, mechanical unit, or other common rooftop feature. Slide 18 shows the photo, photo montage uh, with a revised mock-up to illustrate how limited the vantage point is. Slide 19 shows the original rooftop extensions rendering from Wyckoff Street through the, through the other gap in the block plan. And slide 20 shows the revised proposal of the bulkhead. There are trees obscuring this view again. So to show what the bulkhead would look like, we've shown a blown up illustration of the rooftop extension in the lower right. You'll note the theoretically visibility, visibility from Wyckoff has been significantly diminished, even, even with the blow up. Um, we have concluded another photo progression montage of the actual mock-up to show how limited this vantage point is as well. Trees are starting to bloom, so it really is not visible at all, um, but we have highlighted where it would theoretically be visible from only a very limited vantage point. 
And with that, we conclude our presentation and hand it over to the commissioners to ask any questions. Thank you. Commissioners, do we have any questions? Right, I don't see any questions, so we may be able to begin our discussion. Um, and we have not received any written comments on the revised proposal. All right, so I am unmuting you or requesting to unmute all of you so we can begin our discussion. And so we had, this was, as you recall, this was just last week and we had a, a very robust discussion about rooftop additions and uh, appropriateness under the criteria in which we, in which we evaluate rooftop additions and visibility, scale, um, the materials and details of what you see and how you see it in the context and, and how it um, reads within the, its context. And um, as uh, was presented, we were sort of mixed on opinions and there were some of us who were comfortable with it, some of us who wanted to see a less visible addition and some who didn't wanna see an addition here at all. And so the applicant has revised the proposal <clears throat> to make it less visible and, um, and again, these two viewpoints are very limited. If you uh, walk one, you know, five steps one way or the other way, the, the line of sight is obscured again by adjacent buildings or buildings on the streetscape. So um, this is sort of the primary view, I think that's really left. The other view is um, very obscured at this point. So we'll begin our discussion. And, you know, as you know, I, was supportive of the addition because I really feel that even as it was proposed last time, the size and visibility was consistent with other additions we've approved um, th throughout the city in Row House and Brownstone districts. And, um, but did feel that the fins uh, could be re uh, removed as they called attention to the addition in the streetscape. And um, Commissioner Bland, I think you also were comfortable with this the last time. And now that they've revised it to make it smaller, I would uh, think that your comments would be similar, but why don't you go ahead? Well, they're very similar. Um, in a way, I'm sorry that they had to reduce it, but uh, I understand to get the votes we need, uh, they did. And I think it's fine. It was to me fine before um, appropriate and uh, certainly it's appropriate still. Okay. All right. And commissioner Lutfi, I think you also, you were completely comfortable with the, um, rear yard addition, but I think did ask them to look at doing a single door above the addition and also ask them to look at eliminating the fins to simplify the rooftop addition. Yeah, um, I was, at, oh, yes, I was positive about the, uh, the project overall, except for those things. I think they did a great job on the, the back, you know, putting the door, reducing it to a single door and putting it within the confines of uh, the window uh, brick frame and, you know, I'm fine with the bulkhead. Okay, all right, thank you. And I'm gonna jump around. I'm gonna start with those who were comfortable with it if it would be less visible. So Commissioner Holford-Smith, I think last time you also commented on the fins um, calling attention to the addition, but uh, indicated that you would support an addition that was less visible. So uh, is this in the um, realm of of, uh, of appropriate for you? Yes, I think this is very successful. Looks like a standard rooftop stair bulkhead and I, I think it's appropriate as is. Okay, thank you. And Commissioner Chapin, I think you also felt that you could support something if it was less visible from these views. Uh, <clears throat> I, I had a concern about this being the first uh, rooftop addition and also it's right. designed to an extent and I, Although I wanted, I understood the need for more space. I felt that the space being constructed might not be so essential to the program as other additions that were being made. I think this is. I, I'm very satisfied with this. I don't think that the uh, bulkhead is an issue at all. Uh, that I that I can support without any problem. So I'm I'm fine with this and with the design of the rear, which I also think is fine, and any visibility is is also okay. So. Just as presented is fine with me. Okay, great. Thank you. And I think Commissioner Gustafson, you uh, definitely expressed a preference to not see it, but said that you, I think, might be open to seeing something that would be less visible. So, how are you feeling at this point? Yeah, I, I, I think 
this is not merely a tweak. This is a a, a, a dramatic change, and uh, um, and, uh, and and I think it's um, it's fine as is. Um, I would note it's it's um, it's it's shocking that they team turned this thing around in seven days and uh with the, the dramatic changes and i think that's a that's incredibly impressive and whatever the formula is for that secret sauce they need to share that with other architects and teams here <sighs> okay thanks okay and commissioner shamir baron i think you were concerned about having any visibility because you couldn't see other additions from these views within this block and i don't know if the change to a bulkhead changes that for you Yes, I think the visibility of a bulkhead um, is appropriate as it is. Okay, great. And Commissioner Goldblum, I think you um, philosophically had a concern about uh, an addition on this block, regardless of visibility, um, because of the, the, uh, the limited number of other additions. Um, but we did note that the commission did approve another addition and could approve additions that were not visible within this block, irrespective of the context. Um, and I don't know if a bulkhead changes that for you, um, but why don't you go ahead? It does. I think a bulkhead is appropriate. And I think the other details that they've changed are also appropriate. Great. Okay. And Commissioner Chen, I think you were... Um, also, either I think you were um, wanting to see something less visible. Yeah, I, I agree with the rest of the commissioner um, that uh, the applicant made a, a, a vast uh, improvement over the last proposal. And I agree with uh, Commissioner Gustafson. I want the secret sauce as well. Okay. All right. And Commissioner Jefferson, you were not here last week, but I think you've seen um, where we were and where it's um, ended up. So how are you feeling? I, I can support this proposal. Okay. All right. So I think that um, <coughs> the magic sauce worked and we have a consensus to approve. So um, why don't I go ahead and, and make that motion. Okay. In the matter of docket number 22, sorry. One. The matter of docket number 22-05216, 184A Bergen Street in the Borum Hill Historic District, a modified Ital late Italianate style row house built in 1873 to 1874. This is an application to construct rooftop and rear yard additions and alter the rear facade. And I note that the building style, scale, materials, and details are among the features that contribute to the special architectural and historic character of the Borum Hill Historic District and recommend approval finding that the proposed work will not eliminate or damage any significant architectural features, that the proposed rooftop bulkhead will be modest in size set and set back from the front and rear facades and the rear yard addition will not rise to the full height of the building, thereby retaining a sense of the building's original scale and massing that the scale of the rear yard addition will be in keeping with historic additions, such as tea porches at houses of this age and style and with existing modern additions within the block. That the rear yard addition will not project further into the rear yard than other than the addition at the adjacent house and within this deep lot, its size will not overwhelm the neighboring properties or detract from the central green space. That the rear yard addition will be in keeping with the with the character of the surrounding secondary facades in terms of its simple massing, solid to void ratio, materials, finishes, and level of ornamentation. That the modified opening and door providing access to the roof of the rear yard addition will be compatible with the overall scale and pattern of openings and fenestration of the upper floors. That the bulkhead and raised chimney flue will be simply designed and typical in terms of materials and finishes that the raised chimney flue will be the minimum height required by building code and that the work will only be visible from public thoroughfares at a distance in incidental views within the context of secondary facades. And uh, Commissioner Bland, would you second that motion? Second. Mark, will you call the vote? Chair Carroll? Aye. Commissioner Bland? Aye. Commissioner Shamir Barron? Aye. Commissioner Chapin? Aye. 
Commissioner Chen. Aye. Commissioner Goldblum. Aye. Commissioner Gustafson. Aye. Commissioner Jefferson. Aye. Commissioner Lutfi. Aye. Commissioner Holford Smith. Aye. With 10 in favor and none opposed, the motion passes. Well, that's approved. Thank you. And we'll move to the next public meeting item. Okay, the next uh, public meeting item is number two, LPC 22-01806, an application for a certificate of appropriateness in the borough of Manhattan, block 644, lot 64, 69 Gansevoort Street in the Gansevoort Market Historic District. This is a 19th century building altered in the modern style by George H. Seuss in 1949. The application is to construct a rooftop addition. This was last presented at the public hearing of October 26, 2021, and no action was taken at that time. I will need to open the proceedings to turn it over to the applicant to present the revised proposal. Okay, thank you. Commissioner Shamir Barron, would you make a motion to open the proceedings? So moved. Thank you. And Commissioner Gustafson, would you second that motion? Second. All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, the applicant may present. Uh, good morning, commissioners. Ward Dennis with Higgins Quays Barth and Partners. I'm joined by Jonathan Taylor from my office and Alexandra Dedunas from uh, Bromley Caldera Architects. Um, the uh, the public meeting item. This is 69 Ganswort, uh, the RNL former RNL restaurant, and remembered by most of us as the former home of uh, Florent Restaurant, uh, located on. Uh, Gansward Street in the Gansward Historic District. Uh, the building was uh, constructed in 1949 in the Art Modern style. Uh, you can see it here in its context within the district of taller and lower buildings on the triangular block formed by uh, Gansward Little West 12th and Washington Street. Um, as you may recall, this was, uh, this was presented in October of last year. Uh, the history of the site included uh, a three-story wood frame building that was constructed sometime before 1950 and a rear four-story brick building, uh, both used as tenements uh, and restaurant at the front. Did that go? Yep. Yeah. Uh, in 1949, the three story wood frame building was taken down, and this one story uh, restaurant was constructed art in the Art Modern style. And the four story rear building was cut down to two stories. Uh, this is very similar to what we see happening throughout the district in the 1940s and 1950s as buildings are being. Uh, cut down. Uh, we also see this happening to the building immediately to our west, uh, which is now a three-story building, historically four stories. Uh, you can see the uh, two-story rear building still sticking up over the restaurant here on the left. And this is a view of that two-story, that second-story piece from the roof of 69 Gansport, looking north at the top right here and then uh, the rear of the two-story building from uh, the neighboring property looking to the south on the bottom right. Uh, the context of this block uh, does include a lot of buildings that have been cut down over time. Uh, the odd street angles and the like uh, create these many views into the center of the block uh, with uh, other rooftop additions that have been approved previously. Uh, in our previous proposal, we took this history of the site and, uh, and the history of the block and proposed a two-story addition on top of the existing second story uh, using this sort of ghost abstraction of a uh, historic building in order uh, uh, I'm sorry, using the ghost abstraction. The um, comments from the commissioners, I think we, it was interesting. We heard a range of comments on some points. Uh, I think we had unanimity on a few points. So one was that an addition on this building could be appropriate. However, the height of the addition should not exceed the height of the neighboring buildings, either to the right or the left. And you can see that our uh, fourth story here is substantially 
uh, above the uh, neighboring building to the right. Uh, some commissioners thought that we should bring an addition forward. Some thought we should push it back. Uh, I think there was very, uh, if not unanimity, uh, most commissioners felt that the addition should not compete with the existing building, uh, the RNL restaurant below, and should be more understated. Uh, some commissioners suggested using uh, materials and colors that related more closely to the Art Modern building or creating a more direct dialogue with the Art Modern style. Uh, we took all of those comments in, into mind and in particular, starting with the comment to uh, keep the height below the adjacent building. And that really led us to determine that an addition going up above the existing second story didn't make sense, uh, particularly if it was going to be pushed back further uh and the like so what we are now proposing is an extension of the existing second story bringing it forward uh by about 29 feet uh and cladding it in an aluminum panel system uh it is the the paneling is a reno bond uh system which does have a metallic finish uh you can see that the organization of the extension above the restaurant now uh, matches very closely to the organization of the restaurant below with the very narrow side piers and the fascia on top and the large uh, opening in the center uh, uh, with doors and windows. Um, and then here is another view from the side. Uh, do note that there is this small extension on our neighboring building uh, with a staircase that goes up. So there is a gap between uh, our building and the neighboring building at this location. Um, and here is a section showing the previous proposal with the two-story addition on top of the existing uh, second story and bringing that second story out further here. We've now eliminated the addition, addition entirely uh, and are simply bringing uh, the second story forward. It is about seven and a half feet back from uh, the front of the existing parapet. And you can see here that we have kept the parapet at a lower height, actually lower than the height of the existing building to the rear. And we did that so that we would not wind up with a, with a very large parapet over the front of the building. Uh, we have held back the uh, railings, it's a cable railing system painted. We've held that back a further seven feet to minimize the visibility of that piece. Uh, and then here is a section through. Ceiling height remains the same as existing, eight feet six throughout. Uh, here is the, uh, this is the line of the existing second story and we are bringing it forward, as I said, about 29 feet. Uh, so that it is seven and a half feet back from uh, the front facade of the building. Uh, and then here are just a couple views of the existing, the existing second story uh, uh, rear building is visible and will of course be visible now, but certainly less so uh, than what was uh, proposed previously and obviously uh, significantly lower than either of the adjacent buildings. Uh, and again, the design of the addition uh, is trying, you know, certainly not calling attention to itself, but also relating in a contemporary way to the uh, organization of the building below and uh, to the materials. Um, and then this is just a detail showing uh, front view with the materials noted. Uh, the railing system will be a painted metal cable rail system. Uh, if you look at the, uh, uh, the Arno restaurant, the former Florent, uh, it really is a, a very simple building of its time. It's, it's a brick building with a uh, stainless steel uh, storefront system, uh, very well done, but still very simple. And we have again matched that in terms of the organization of the facade above. 
Uh, and in looking at the materials, this is, I think, uh, the one disadvantage of Zoom is that I can't uh, hold this up and pass it around the table for you. Uh, but as I said, it's a Reno bond system. It is a mica finish, so it is a metallic finish, uh, but it is a very matte metallic finish. Uh, and if you look at the photo on the right, this is the sample down here. Um, the stainless steel, there's actually a variety of stainless steel and aluminum finishes on the facade. So we have the shinier stainless steel that has uh, these sort of vertical pieces and the more matte stainless steel here at the base and here at the fascia. And then the signage of the r &L restaurant is an aluminum, uh, mill finished aluminum. And that's probably what is closest to the Reno Bond finish. So uh, we think that the finish is appropriate. It's a little bit more matte. It's not a shiny finish, so it's not going to be overly reflective or call attention to itself in that way. Uh, it is, uh, you know, as part of the overall design intended to be recessive uh, and not competing with the RNL uh, slash Florent restaurant below. Uh, these are some details of the window and the cladding system. The cladding system will come up over the top of the parapet. Uh, the windows will be painted a off-white uh, finish, um, which will give it a slight contrast with uh, the metallic panels, uh, but again, not stand out, uh, but not be too uniform, I guess is, is the right way to put it. Um, Existing plans showing the setback now at about 35 feet for the second story, and then bringing that forward to seven and a half feet off the front of the parapet. Uh, mechanical equipment will be at the back of the roof, so will not be visible. Um, front elevation, I think we've looked at uh, enough. I can come back to some of these if you have questions. Uh, do note for the rear elevation, we're now proposing no changes. Uh, fenestration remains the same. It will be, uh, uh, it, it will remain a brick uh, rear wall. On the side wall where we have, on the west side where we have that stair coming up on the neighboring building, we will return the aluminum cladding around to the side as far back as that stair. And then the rest of the facade and the side elevation is not exposed at all. Uh, and the east side elevation is not exposed either, except at the rear of the existing to remain. Uh, I'm gonna skip forward a little bit through these sections. Uh, I just wanna get to a couple views at the very end. Uh, this is a view uh, looking east from the corner of Washington and Gansvort. Uh, previous proposal uh, with a two-story above the existing two-story and, of course, coming up above uh, both the height of both neighbors, uh, the reduced height now, uh, eliminating all addition. It's only a forward extension of the existing second story. Will be visible roughly from this corner of Washington uh, to a little bit to the east of the building. Uh, you can see on this final view, by the time we get further down the block to the east, uh, the new extension is not visible at all. Previously, the two-story addition was visible over our neighbor 67 Gansward Street. Uh, so I will end it there and welcome your questions and comments. And thank you for your time. Okay, thank you. Commissioners, do we have any questions? don't see any questions. I think the presentation was very clear and thorough. Um, I will note for the record that um, Village Preservation did send written comments on the revised proposal um, with uh, explaining they have concerns with the uh, material on the uh, addition. So um, if there are no other questions, commissioners, I'm gonna start to unmute you so we can begin our discussion. <clears throat> And um, as Ward presented this, um, when it was originally shown to us, the commission, commissioners present were comfortable with a, an addition uh, and even a, a larger addition 
um, on this particular building, given the building's history and evolution, and then the fact that in this particular historic district, the streetscapes are really characterized by um, a lot of alterations that happened during the various historic waves of reuse and adaptive use of these buildings as um, changes went from residential to, as buildings went from residential to commercial, to industrial, to market uh, uses. And so the commission itself has a history of approving change based on that historic character of the district and uh, most notably the visible additions. And so I think uh, the commission was open to an addition here and I think somewhat intrigued by the ghost approach to the design, but I think really struggled with then, you know, what do you do with it if it's uh, if it's sort of a ghost of the previous floors, should it, it should probably be lower, then does it get pulled forward? Does it get set back? Are there aspects of the design that change? And I think um, there, you know, it was, uh, we had a very interesting discussion and I think um, ultimately not one single direction on kind of how to fulfill the design intent here. So um, the applicants have sort of changed course and are now proposing a one story, well, extending the existing one story addition, the second floor forward and doing it in a simpler design um, that is more recessive. So we'll begin our discussion. Commissioner Goldblum, do you wanna start this one? Sure. Um, well, it's, I, think it's, I think it's appropriate as drawn. I think that um, it's definitely recessive it definitely does not really change the impression that the restaurant makes on the streetscape. Um, you know, that varied profile of the block is retained. Um, I think that the choice of material is acceptable also. Uh, I, I personally think that, that the, the horizontal joint that kind of runs very, very graphically through the center panel might, might be um, something that they could work on with staff. I'm, I'm not a, I think it kind of announces it as metal panel as opposed to kind of making it more of a quiet presence. But I, I think I can, I can support it as is. Okay, thank you. All right, Commissioner Chen. Yeah, I think uh, this is interesting. Um, uh, the, uh, the fact that they uh, took it to uh, reduce it further from last time and make it a recess, I think the, uh, the, uh, I agree with Michael Coburn, it, it is acceptable, but I do agree with the comment that I think the, uh, some of the materials um, uh, is, is uh, for me personally, um, uh, may require a little bit more further study, I, I think, the, especially along the signage, but that's just my personal view. Okay, Commissioner Bland. Um, this makes me sad. It's a strategic retreat, which I think, um, personally, it just went way too far. Um, the, the initial concept was right to me, if, if too large, too high. Um, and I'm sad, saddened to see it so diminished and changed. Um, you know, it seems like, particularly in this district, uh, some really robust so-called rooftop additions have expressed themselves. And I think it should have here. Um, that said, I can't say that it's inappropriate to be so um, recessive. Um, so I can't vote against it. I'm just saddened that um, somehow we've, I guess our actions have <laughs> uh, cow cowed the applicant to such a degree that um, we, we see this. Um, I'm sure that's not an opinion held by every other commissioner, um, but it is my opinion. Uh, that said, I think the, um, I guess it's like an Aluco bond or something like that, the material. If that's true, it's a very, I think, a cheap sort of material. And maybe since so little of it is going to be had, maybe the applicant could be, um, staff could work with the applicant to come up with a a better, a better, or a material that we can understand a little bit better. Maybe we don't fully understand it. As Ward said, he can't pass it around. Um, in any event, I 
I've said what I, I think, but I do think that a little bit more work needs to be done on the material itself. Okay. But are you comfortable with the idea of it being a different material than the brick and something that does relate yeah. to the metal yeah. elements? Okay. Yeah. 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 It should be a metal element. I think that's yeah. right. I must say, uh, Commissioner Fred Bland is very on the point, just like last hearing. Uh, well said and um, uh, very, very articulate. Okay, thank you. Commissioner Lutfi? Um, well, uh, other than the, the um, comments about working with staff on the materiality, there's really nothing to complain about here. I appreciate Fred's comments, and I have to say, the the applicant was more than responsive. I mean, I, I wasn't actually expecting such an, I'm going to say, you know, understated response. I think it's a good response. Um, it's simple. Um, it's set back in a way that it doesn't compete with the facade in, in a way, and it pays homage to what was there uh, for, for, I would say, all of us has historically, is this was an important place. And I, I, uh, I, I the, uh, it's funny, the signage on the restaurant, I think is, is very important in terms of its as expressiveness. Um, and uh, I think the fact that there's no competition here and, and that the, the materials attempt to speak to it uh, is uh, a, a good a good move. So I can, I can approve this uh, along with the sharing the comment that the applicant worked with staff on the materiality. Okay, thank you, Commissioner Jefferson. Um, I I I since you're going to make a regressive a recessive building, why not go all the way and make it completely recessive? So from uh, unquiet, and if that's the case, then the addition facade should be quieter, so that the front, the front facade become dominant, and that would be, this would fit in perfectly, if that's the concept. So, do you mean in its details or its finish? It, it's finished. The color. It should be a little bit darker, so it's it, it's not as dominant from the frontal view. Okay. Commissioner Gustafson? Uh, it's, I think it's appropriate as is with uh, the subject to the uh, comments on materials. Commissioner Holford Smith? Uh, Shamir. Baron. Oh, sorry. <laughs> did I say, I thought I, did I say Commissioner Holford Smith? Sorry, I meant, I, and I was reading your name too, because I have your name already written down. <laughs> Okay, uh, so I, I I don't know that I was at the last hearing for this, but I think that what um, there's a bit of a miss, and I think I might have I might agree with Commissioner Bland in part on this. Um, it, the what was interesting, uh, uh, sort of about what was what had previously existed and what and the, what the last proposal um, uh, uh, sort of extended or or continued was the depth of the sort of back building, how far back it was from the street. And my problem with the previous proposal was not that it was too tall, um, but it, the material. Uh, I thought that it, I think, I, had I been there or if I was there and forgot, have forgotten, I would have wanted for it to be um, a brick material, sort of recessive in, in, in materiality, but, um, could have been taller because it was so far back. Uh, I, I kind of think that what they've, they're proposing right now is, is sort of very, it's just strange to me. Um, it neither sort of continues or abides by that depth um, of setback. Um, and, and it kind of calls some kind of attention to a relationship with the front uh, with the existing street facade, which again undermines that thing about the kind of the depth, the, the separation of the back building of the top top building from the front facade. And then it does it in a way that's kind of off because I don't think this material, Reynobon, is has anything to do 
with stainless steel. You know, stainless steel and from that particular historic moment has to do with this kind of sanitary, supposedly um, material that, that would have been appropriate for the meat market where you think you want to be able to wash things off, clean things off and for things to not be corrupted, you know, and, and, um, and, and where dirt could come off easily. So, and where the material itself would not rust. So there are a lot of things here that don't really make sense to me. I agree with um, Commissioner Jefferson's comment as well, that there's a certain kind of, it's, the, the, the material is competing or is drawing too much attention. So what am I saying? So I think I would have preferred the taller building set back in a brick. I think that, or, or in something that was really very quiet. I think in this case, since they have reduced the height, I can't entirely argue with it, but I don't think that this material is appropriate. I think it should be um, a, a, a brick. So um, I think, that I, I guess, so do I think that this proposal is appropriate as presented? Not quite, no. Okay. All right, Commissioner Holford-Smith. Yes, I think, I think, you know, I was also a little surprised to see how much it reduced it was in the, in the second um, iteration of this edition. Um, again, I think that's not inappropriate. Um, I'm listening to everyone's comments about the material and thinking about it and, I think the Reno bond, um, it's just a, such a flat, modern material. Um, I, don't, I don't think that is appropriate. Um, and the more I'm thinking about it, the more I think that maybe it should be a brick, um, just to, really, to be really recessive and not to try to compete with the stainless steel, as Adi was saying. Um, I, think, I think any metal will, will compete with the stainless steel storefront. So maybe a brick or maybe a stucco. Okay. All right, sorry, I'm just taking one last look at my notes here. Um, so it's interesting, we've had um, a lot of thoughts about material and um, if on the, uh, you know, I too was sort of thought that previous proposal was interesting and sort of had the potential to add to the kind of dynamic um, and sort of interesting. Uh, oh, Diana Chapin, I'm so sorry. How did I miss you? Please go ahead. Uh, thank you, Sarah. Uh, I, I actually find this acceptable. The, uh, I was also surprised that it had been uh, greatly reduced, but I think it uh, it presents as a appropriate addition to this kind of modern building, and I think that uh, they could work with the staff on a metal material that appeared more compatible with the existing building. But I could, with that condition, I could certainly uh, approve it, and I do not think that it has to be brick. I think that because it's an addition to this existing building and it's a modern building, I think that in this case, that's appropriate. Okay, thank you very much. Um, and that is where I was going as well. I think it was um, a, you know, an interesting idea. This one I see more as a recessive setback um, addition that is also like many of the additions we've approved in this district and um, and I will say that the approach generally in this district for additions has been to do something of a lighter material than the, the brick one story or two story buildings on which they're being added. So I think um, I also could be comfortable with the metal. So I think we have six to vote it out with a metal like material with the condition that they continue to work with the staff on the uh, material, including the finish and the joints and details. So Commissioner Goldblum, would you make that motion and then we'll see where we are with the vote. Okay. <clears throat> uh, regarding 69 Gansford Street in the Gansford Market Historic District, a 19th century building altered in the modern style um, by George H. Seuss in 1949. Applications to construct rooftop addition, I'd note 
that the Gansport Market Historic District is characterized by waves of adaptive reuse that significantly changed the appearance of many of the buildings and resulted in alterations in building heights and provided greater visibility of rooftop features and that since the district's designation in 2003, buildings have continued to adapt and now represent varied uses such as retail, restaurants, galleries, and offices. I recommend approval. With, uh, I recommend approval, finding that the proposed work will not eliminate or damage any significant architectural features of the building, but the surrounding streetscape has a variety of building types and heights, which supports the presence of a visible rooftop addition. That simple form and one story height of the proposed rooftop addition, set back from the Gansworth Street facade, will be subservient to the historic building and will not overwhelm the facade, that the materials and design of the proposed addition featuring aluminum composite panel cladding with a matte gray finish will harmonize with art modern features in the ground floor storefront and utilitarian metal feature features historically found throughout the historic district. That the proposed bulkhead and parapet railings will be only moderately visible, seen in conjunction with the taller background, the taller background buildings and will be in keeping with the typical utilitarian rooftop accretions found throughout the district. And that the proposed work will not detract from the special architectural or historic features of the building, streetscape, or Gainsborough Market Historic District. However, the applicant will work with staff on the materiality and detailing of the front facade of the uh, addition and explore uh, alternates to the metal, or alternate finishes or materials to the metal. Okay, thank you. And um, Commissioner Chen, would you second that motion? Second. Okay. And Mark, will you call the vote? Chair Carroll? Aye. Commissioner Bland? Aye. Commissioner Shamir Barron? Aye. Commissioner Chapin? Aye. Commissioner Chen? Aye. Commissioner Goldblum? Aye. Commissioner Gustafson? Aye. Commissioner Jefferson? Aye. Commissioner Lutfi? Aye. Commissioner Holford Smith? Aye. With 10 in favor and none opposed, the motion passes. Okay, so that's approved. So please continue to work with the staff on refining the material for the cladding at that addition. And we'll move to the next item. Thank you, Commissioners. Next item is public meeting item number three, LPC 20-02642. An application for a certificate of appropriateness in the borough of Manhattan, block 1387, lot 49, 38 East 73rd Street in the Upper East Side Historic District. This is a neo greco Queen Anne style house designed by Charles Breck and Company and built in 1886 to 87. And the application is to legalize the construction of a rear yard addition uh, without LPC permits. This was last presented at the public hearing of October 19th, 2021, and no action uh, was taken at that time the staff will walk us through the revised proposal. Hey, good morning, commissioners. Abby Hurlbut, preservation staff. This application is to legalize the construction of a rear yard addition and greenhouse performed without Landmarks Preservation Commission permits at 38 East 73rd Street, uh, which is located here on the south side of East 73rd Street between Madison and Park Avenues in the, historic, in the Upper East Side Historic District. As Corey mentioned, the application was originally heard in October of last year, and at that hearing, <clears throat> excuse me, the commissioners present expressed concerns about the lack of documentation of the existing conditions and requested that additional photos be provided to show the existing conditions. So the applicant has now provided those additional photos. Um, and first, I will quickly recap the proposal and what was presented previously. So the first few slides here are just photos of the front facade um, from the street and showing that the rear yard addition is not visible from, from any public thoroughfares, even, even through this gap in the street wall. Oops, excuse me. The photos H, I, and J um, show the existing conditions of the rear yard and the additions from above. Uh, this next slide shows the block plan. So this is our property here. And you can see that the one story portion of the addition extends to the rear lot line. And you will also note that the block contains a, a variety of accretions that extend to the rear lot line. 
This next slide shows uh, in Axon the previous conditions here and now the existing conditions, uh, which is proposed to be legalized. So as you can see, the building featured a historic L, which partially remains. And the addition to be legalized is this one story basement extension to the rear lot line. And this additional greenhouse at the parlor floor level adjacent to the L here. So here are some photos of the rear facade and you can see um, the upper portion of the L above the greenhouse, uh, which remains as is. There's another photo looking up at the, at the rear. These next few drawings, <coughs> excuse me, are of the addition and you will note that they show that the addition was stucco clad, which is an error. Um, the newly provided photographs document the actual existing conditions showing that the addition is brick. So I'm gonna move forward here and here are some of the additional photos. So it, again, it's a, tight, it's a tight view from the rear here, but as you can see from these, from the parapets of the neighboring buildings, looking down at the building, you can see that the, the addition is actually brick. And here's the greenhouse here from the, from the west side. And now in this photo, you're standing on the roof of the addition, looking at the greenhouse, and then of course the rear L here. And then this is um, on, the, on the east side, looking down at the brick from, from this building and then from the neighboring building, um, looking at the addition here. So uh, with that, the applicant is available to answer any questions if you have any. Okay, thank you, Abby. Commissioners, do we have any questions? All right, don't see any questions. I think the last time we saw this, we just, we, we had a lot of questions. We didn't understand exactly what the context was and the history. So Abby, thank you for presenting that so clearly. Um, I do want to just note for the record that we received a letter from uh, the Friends of the Upper East Side Historic Districts um, recommending denial of the application. Um, it's, it's unpermitted. So um, I think if there are no questions, we can go to our discussion, but I do want to give um, the applicant a chance to speak or say any final comments before we move to our discussion. Although I actually, I don't see him. Abby, is he here? He is, but would you need to open the hearing for him to- I'd have to open the proceedings, right? So I, I guess I just wanna give him the opportunity. If he doesn't have anything to add, that's fine. David, could you unmute yourself? Or just raise your hand if there's anything you wanna add. I can't, I don't see him at all. So. Okay. Um, all right, wait, no, David, just yeah. do you, is there anything you need to add or you want to no, add? No, I can answer questions. There's okay. nothing additional to say. All right. Okay. So we do have one question. So let me go ahead and open the, we're going to, um, I'm going to unmute all, all right. of you so we can open the proceedings. So uh, uh, Commissioner Chapin, would you make a motion to open the proceedings? Uh, so moved. And Commissioner Chen, would you second that motion? Second. All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Um, Commissioner Holford Smith, please go ahead. Just a simple question. Do we know when this was built? Like how long has it been there? Uh, I, I believe it's been there for about maybe 15 years. And that includes the, the first floor brick extension and the greenhouse? That's right, that's right. Okay. Oh. Thank you. That was it. Okay. All right. So I think we um, can begin our discussion. So this is, you know, this is a kind of a longstanding condition that the applicant is, uh, I guess it came to his attention that it wasn't permitted at DOB so, um, or by LPC. So he is um, seeking to rectify that. Um, and Abby laid out the context here. This is um, a very dense block with varied buildings. This um, building 
was once part of a row, none of the rest of the row remains. And it's at a sec an end of the block where there are also a number of other full lot extensions, which are quite common um, on buildings that are coming off of Madison Avenue and um, the sort of the commercial thoroughfares. So um, it's, it's a dense area with other full lot one story rear yard extensions. And um, we'll be discussing that as well as the greenhouse. And we'll begin our discussion. Uh, Commissioner Lutfi, would you like to start this one? Sure. Um, I, I don't have that much to say. Uh, get, given how long this has been uh, up there, um, it sounds like the applicant discovered that it it wasn't approved. I don't know if uh, the applicant is, you know, was involved in its original development. But uh, I think if this came to us before us today, I wouldn't approve it um, because it's uh, not visible and. Um, and the, because it's not visible and it fits within the context, I guess I can approve it. Okay, thanks. And I also would note that the side of the greenhouse that faces the neighbor has a, um, not a glass wall. I guess it's this mm -hmm. masonry unit wall. Um, so I think that also helps to sort of contain that greenhouse within its own yard. Mm -hmm. uh, Commissioner Jefferson. Um, if this if this came up today, I could approve it, but I could not approve it with the barnacles on the back and the mechanical systems. Um, I would never approve that. So if for me to approve this, all the mechanical systems would have to be removed and placed in some location. Um, this, uh, we would never approve something like that today. Uh, oh, Mike, can I say something? Uh, my client would agree. No, 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 no David, no. David, no. Okay. So I just, I do want to turn to Corey though, because I think the split system units on the rear facade of the L actually would meet the rules for a staff level approval. Is that right? Uh, absolutely. The staff level rules do allow for wall mounted um, mechanical units, as well as things like ducts and flues, uh, certainly where they're not visible, even in cases when they're minimally visible. Uh, provided that they're attached at uh, mortar joints and have small penetrations where necessary, but really underpinned by being uh, mechanical units subject to change over time and, and reversible. And, and again, in this case, not visible from anywhere. But, well, I, I did not know that. I did not know the, those details. But um, I'm on the fence here. Um, okay. Okay, let's go around and we'll see where we are. Commissioner Gustafson. Yeah, I, in, in, in light of how enclosed this space is and how non-visible uh, this is, and um, um, I would have, if this had come up, I would have uh, found it to be appropriate. I would note that it is an excellent example of um, how easy this might have been for this applicant if, if, if the, uh, uh, whether it's them or the previous owner had come to us in the first instance, uh, um, you know, this would have gone like butter instead of being, uh, um, such a hassle for them, but uh, we are where we are, and I think it's appropriate as is. Okay, thank you, Commissioner Shamir Barron. Yes, uh, I, I, I think I agree with Commissioner Gosson. It, it's, um, it's, I, I suppose we might have, <clears throat> it, but in any event, there is this kind of. Um, it almost seems like it's been there for. Sort of, <laughs> You know, and it, not because it's 15 years, but because it's 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 it. No one it's sort of no one gains from it. It seems so so kind of um, not okay. I, I'm not being clear, but it's it's it 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 doesn't seem to take advantage of the block in a way, or the or the or the rear in a way that's um, that's ex extravagant or sort of takes too much. It's um. There's something kind of strange and modest about it. So that's not very clear, but I think it's appropriate and I can approve it. Okay. Sorry. Commissioner Holford-Smith. 
I agree. I think given that this tight little corner of this um, these backyards that that this, as Adi said, doesn't take away from anything. And I think we probably would have approved it had it come to us originally. So I can find it appropriate. Okay. Commissioner Chapin. Yeah, I agree with the comments of other uh, commissioners about the visibility, uh, it's, uh, that it's modest. And I, I do think that in the context, we would have approached something very similar if it had been presented to us. So I can approve it as presented. Okay, Commissioner Goldblum. Um, I, I too can approve it as presented, but I too share um, Everardo's concern about those units. And it might be worthwhile to look at that regulation to uh, sharpen it to some degree. Uh, it, it, it's, I think it's okay to have fans or things of that nature that can be mechanical things that are uh, attached to or visible on the rear facades, but air conditioning units like that, I, I don't, I, I just think that they're um, not appropriate in historic districts irrespective of their visibility. I think they can go on roofs, right. but I, it's got nothing to do with this particular application in this. Okay, thank you. Commissioner Chen. Yeah, I agree in the context uh, and given the history and this, uh, you know, lack of visibility, so to speak, uh, I agree with the rest of the commissioners. Okay, Commissioner Bland. Yep, it's all been said, it's appropriate even if 15 years later. Okay. Okay, so I think we can go ahead and make a motion on this one. Commissioner Lutfi, would you read the motion? Sure. Um, in, the matter, in the matter of docket 20-02642, uh, uh, 38 East 73rd Street, Upper East Side Historic District, a neo Greek Queen Anne style house designed by Charles yes. and Company and built in 1886 87. The application is to legalize the construction of a rear yard addition without yes. Landmarks Preservation Commission permits. I know that the building style, scale, materials, and details are among the features that contribute to the special architectural and historic character of the Upper East Side Historic District. I recommend approval finding that the addition is not visible from any public thoroughfare, that the work did not eliminate or damage any significant architectural features, that the addition does not rise to the full height of the building, thereby maintaining a sense of the building's original scale and massing, that the brick cladding at the basement level and the greenhouse at the first floor are typical in terms of materials and placement and do not detract from the character of the rear of this row house or the neighboring buildings, and that this row house is the only extant building of a historic row situated on a buried block of row houses and large apartment buildings, many of which have large extensions into the rear yard. Therefore, the construction of a full lot coverage, one story rear yard addition surmounted by a small greenhouse does not detract from the adjoining properties nor diminish the unity of a row or significant central green space. All right, and Commissioner Holford-Smith, would you second that motion? I second it. Mark, will you call the vote? Chair Carroll? Aye. Commissioner Bland? Aye. Commissioner Shamir Barron? Aye. Commissioner Chapin? Aye. Commissioner Chen? Aye. Commissioner Goldblum? Aye. Commissioner Gustafson? Aye. Commissioner Jefferson? Aye. Commissioner Lutfi? Aye. Commissioner Holford-Smith? Aye. With 10 in favor and none opposed, the motion passes. That's approved. Thank you. And we'll move to the next item. Thank you. Next public meeting item is number four, LPC 21-04247. An application for a certificate of appropriateness in the borough of Staten Island, block 891, lots 99 to 93. 91 West Entry Road, the Ernest Flags, uh, Toad Hill Cottages, Bocot Individual Landmark. This is an empty lot subdivided from the original lot occupied by a cottage designed by Ernest Flagg and built in 1918. The application is to construct a new house. This was last presented at the public hearing of 11, uh, sorry, November 16th, 2021, and no action was taken at that time. The staff will do a brief introduction before turning it over to the applicant to present the revised proposal. Okay, great. Good morning. We'll, we'll just open up the proceedings now so we can transition seamlessly after you introduce it. 
So um, Commissioner Bland, would you make a no motion to open the proceedings? So moved. And Commissioner Chen, would you second that motion? Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. All right. So the applicant may speak after the staff presents. And I also want to note for the record that Commissioner Gustafson is recused on this item. Go ahead, Caroline. All right. Good, good morning, Commissioners. Caroline Kane Levy from the Preservation Staff. At the November 16th, 2021 public hearing and meeting, the Commissioners reviewed the application for a single family house on an open lot that was previously subdivided from the Bocot individual landmark site. Bocot is a stone cottage designed by Ernest Flagg. Most commissioners were gener generally supportive of, con of constructing a building on this lot, provided that the house design was sensitive to the individual landmark building and well sited on the property. However, commissioners felt that the building mass needed to be reduced and the relationship of the house to the site and the existing topography needed to be restudied to further press the house into the land. The commission also felt that while the applicant did a good job incorporating elements of typical flag cottages into the proposed house, the facade designs were too complex and should be simplified and refined, particularly at the south facade, which faces Bocot. Finally, the commissioners requested that the applicant consider the use of natural materials that are more commonly found throughout the flags houses at siding, roofing, and windows in lieu of the proposed substitute materials. Tim Boyland, the architect, is here to present the proposed changes. Thank you. Good morning, um, commissioners. Thank you, Caroline. Okay. Um, the initial hearing documents are uh, uh, listed as an appendix beginning on slide 33 if someone uh, is looking for that background. So the updated presentation represents a significant modification in response to the recommendations that we heard. Uh, the slide deck illustrates how the building design has been simplified, uh, massing has been simplified, and the overall height reduced. The revised designs illustrate the use of natural field stone throughout the property, including the building facade and the, uh, and the walls, uh, the blue stone, true stucco, and has made a change to incorporate an aluminum clad wood window in, in lieu of the prior spec for composite cladding. The new illustrations also incorporate the proposed plantings, which were mentioned in the first hearing, uh, coordinated with city planning specifications. And as well, we're showing the stone walls and fencing uh, in a more illustrative way throughout the presentation. So as Caroline said, this is a single family detached residence um, in the vocabulary of Ernest Flagg. And it's very much designed uh, based on the historic and contemporary precedent found in his work and in the surrounding flag estate. Uh, there was contemporary uh, homes built in the 1980s through 2008. And we've looked at those very carefully. It's a four-sided design, meaning every, every view has been reviewed uh, in a design context and has been considered. Uh, and just for the record, we are in compliance with applicable zoning use bulk setback regulations. This is an introduction to the first presentation. Uh, at the first hearing, this followed approval from the local community board, community board two in Staten Island. And this is an introduction into our updated, updated design. We'll look at this uh, in much more detail in the coming slides. The east facade, uh, top right, faces West Entry Road, that's a one-way street. And the left facade below is the south elevation, and that faces uh, the, uh, the original home Boca. Just reviewing our site plan, it's a single zoning lot separated into two separate tax building lots. Uh, we are in compliance for setbacks on our new building, top left. Bottom right is the, uh, is the Bocot residence. The original building and uh, later additions equal uh, approximately 102 linear feet along flag place here. Uh, this I consider to be our primary public view. This is a two-way street flag place. This is a one-way street west entry, and we'll look at this in quite a bit of detail here. So this is our site section updated uh, for our new designs. 
We're maintaining 60 feet between the buildings at the first floor envelopes. Uh, our cellar is mostly buried into the site, and so 47 feet between cellar to Bocot. We're maintaining this existing lawn. We're incorporating a lot line stone wall here with plantings behind it. Um, uh, both uh, residences, both, both uh, residences Bocot and the proposed building include a garden terrace on the south side of the building, just above a stone base. So we have a stone wall base and a garden terrace. This shows our site section through here. Reviewing our, our site plan, um, no real updates to the site plan other than specifically the tree planting coordinated with the site lines. As mentioned in the first hearing, uh, we're incorporating a dogwood, red bud, um, holly, trees that um, will grow quickly and attract birds and, and other wildlife. Also, this is the common lot line between us and Bocot, and that is where we have that continuous uh, natural stone wall proposed. This is a very busy slide. Essentially, what we're showing here are the areas that we focused in on after hearing the recommendations. So uh, our dashed lines that you'll see numerous times throughout the presentation, that represents the initial uh, uh, presentation uh, approved by the uh, community board. And uh, we've lowered the building uh, just a bit more than half a story. We've addressed fenestration. We've simplified fenestration. We've simplified the massing. Uh, we've lowered the first floor into the ground by two feet. Uh, we've removed the pergola. We've simplified our dormers throughout uh, and lowered much of that. Um, and just generally simplified the front entryway as well. Quieted down the building, if you will. So this is our front elevation from the uh, original public hearing. This is our comparison drawing where we show the new in comparison to the, to the prior uh, submission and the updated design. And we've got similar slides in this comparison for all four elevations. So this is the left side elevation. This is the side facing Bocot. This is the comparison drawing. You can see our stone wall uh, with the natural uh, field stone incorporated. Uh, our garden terrace above a stone base here remains. The rest of the building quieted and uh, massing reduced, fenestration simplified. That's our new left side elevation. Uh, right side elevation, that is the higher end of the site, looking at it from the opposite side, that's the original. This is our comparison. We've also incorporated the uh, lot line um, wrought iron uh, fencing, just to keep it in context. Uh, we can see here that our first floor elevation is now at grade. Uh, which is consistent with uh, Bocot on its higher side. Walks right out at grade. That's the update. And the rear elevation. That's the original. Here's our comparison. And that's our update. And just note, there also is uh, the fencing on this rear property line that you would see in this view. We left it off just for clarity uh, so you can see what's happening in the rear yard. But this is uh, the photo of the primary public view of the site. Um, to the left is Bocott's lower garage wing with the floor above. Uh, multi-story gabled section is above that to the left. Um, at the street line, corner of flag and west entry road is the stone wall extension of the building, which we've also incorporated uh, into our designs. Uh, to the right is 15 West Entry Road. That's not a landmark property. Um, and uh, 
Note that the photo is taken as all the photos uh, of the site have been taken when the trees are bare of leaves. So this is the most uh, visible uh, time of year. And we've been consistent with that through the presentation. So this is our original uh, uh, through community board two and the initial public hearing. You see the house's center of the image. Um, This is our update. And you see we've incorporated that, that planting. And just a note, that's any planting we're showing is, is the size at planting time, but these are quick growing trees, which will, which will mature quickly and, and provide a lot of coverage. This is a, a secondary view from Flag Place. We didn't update this one. This is the original. Um, you see it's, um, the house can be very marginally seen through the Bocott property. This, all of this, the trees here are on Bocott's property. So they're in control of that coverage. Um, as our building has been simplified and massing lowered uh, and uh, we, didn't, we didn't update this, um, didn't think it necessary, but this is Bocott's essentially their rear yard with their swimming pool and so on. This is a close up um, of that public view, but zoomed in quite close. Uh, this is the original presentation. You see includes a uh, pergola above the garage structure. The garage is set into the ground in a similar way that Bocot is and so on. Um, these eaves are similar to the height above grade that Bocot is. We've simplified it further. Uh, this, is our, this is our update. Again, lower into the ground, closer to the street, deeper into the topography and simplified massing. And that's the update showing the, the planting that's coordinated with city planning filing. Uh, our materials, uh, we're continuing to propose uh, the uh, field stone, uh, natural field stone. This is quarried uh, thin cut field stone. We have a couple of manufacturers identified to provide the material. This is gonna be used throughout. So on the facade of the building, um, most of the building has uh, that the stone exterior, uh, and we we'll use it on the walls, uh, the, the the landscaping and the walls in a similar fashion that uh, uh, Flag established, which was having that concrete wall with the stone embedded uh, as a facing. Our coursing and um, mortar will be uh, uh, will be uh, inspired by not only Flag's work but also the. Uh, the design manual developed by Stern's office as part of Copper Flag Estates. We have uh, bluestone, natural bluestone, which we'll be using anywhere that is visible from the, from the public facade. We'll be using that capping our walls, using our um, uh, treads in our front stairs. And um, again, we have a stucco, which is a, a true stucco application in one place on the building. We've continued to propose use of hardy plank in the small amount of areas that we have on the upper portion of the building um, for our siding. Here we have a change on this slide, which is the Anderson E series, which is a wood uh, casement uh, or awning units that we're uh, identifying, but they'll be aluminum clad on the exterior rather than a, a composite material we had originally in the proposal. Uh, some of our appendices, which we don't have to go through, but they're available uh, if you need some background. The uh, design manual from Stern, of course, the designation reports have been important. Um, approved plans for precedent, uh, 20 Iron Mine Drive in particular, and we have our design drawings in full if you need to see those. Uh, this is a summary of uh, the precedent and 91 West Entry Road, and it just illustrates that we are consistent with, um, with the bulk of those buildings uh, as our reference. We've, we've studied them very closely and, um, and have remained consistent uh, with the size of those buildings. And um, I look forward to any questions uh, and certainly allow you to have discussion on the matter. Uh, and I'm here uh, should there be a question for me. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. All right, commissioners, do we have any questions? 
All right, I'm not seeing any questions. I will note from uh, for the record that we did receive one uh, letter in opposition from an individual um, and it was with all letters, those were uh, shared with you all in advance of today's hearing. So I think uh, um, we don't have any questions, we can move to our discussion. And um, as Caroline laid out at the beginning of the presentation, the last time we saw this, the commission was uh, comfortable with a new building on this uh, subdivided lot. And the applicant has presented um, information that shows that its house to lot size ratio is consistent with other buildings here, including um, the building we approved on 20 Iron Mine Drive, which was also subdivided from another flag cottage. And we approved a new building. Um, and, but at the time, the commission asked that the applicant simplify the massing, lower it, kind of think about how to integrate it into the landscape more. And so the applicant has made a number of revisions, which um, have been presented to us today. So we'll begin our discussion with that. Um, Commissioner Bland, would you start this one? Um, I will. Um, I think this is um, potentially going to be a very nice building here in this uh, very sensitive um, situation. I think um, um, am among the many uh, uh, suburban uh, historic districts we have, this is perhaps the, the smallest, but the most difficult perhaps to really integrate and get an appropriate building uh, because of the nature of what already exists. Um, <clears throat> but I think uh, the applicant has uh, re really listened carefully to our thoughts and comments and has taken them to heart and uh, has achieved uh, what I think is now an appropriate building. I don't have any uh, further thoughts or suggestions to modify what's been um, what's been proposed. <clears throat> okay, thank you, Commissioner Lutfi. Um, yeah, I would uh, concur with uh, what Fred has said. I think the applicant's done a great job here. The, um, just by reducing the massing and the envelope of the building, by pulling it more into the ground, anchoring it better and incorporating, um, incorporating plantings in the, into the site and surrounding the building in a, in a way that it relates better to those plantings and the topography around it. Um, I, the colors and the use of materials seem right. I think it's a terrific project. So okay. I can prove it. Thank you. Commissioner Jefferson. Oh, I think it's a much improved project. And I think the idea of playing with symmetry and asymmetry and a picturesque facade works very well. I, I, I think it's much improved and I can approve this. Okay, thank you. Commissioner Shamir Barron. I agree. Uh, the half story or about six plus six foot plus drop in height really made a huge difference. And it just seems like they've approached every single sort of facade, every, every bit of the contour of the building in, in a very um, sensitive way and in a responsive way to the kind of this very immediate and local context um, as the building meets the landscape, as the building meets the views, uh, really well done and um, a huge improvement and I think very much appropriate. Okay, thank you. Commissioner, um, I think, uh, Commissioner Chapin. Uh, yeah. I agree with previous comments. I think it's it's a huge improvement. Uh, the reduction of the height, uh, oh. simplification of lines and the yes. massing is very important. Uh, the use of the natural materials is critical at this site and lowering it into landscape and working with the topography, all of those are great. I think, uh, I particularly think the front, back, and left work very well. The right side, I thought the tarmac looked a little whatever, but I don't think it's, it's that, in, I think it's okay. I think the asymmetry there is okay. And so I think it's a great improvement and I can approve it as presented. Okay, Commissioner Goldblum. 
Okay, um, thank you. I, I agree with what everyone has been saying. It's it's uh, kudos to the applicant for, for listening and, and figuring out how to make it work. The integration with the site by dropping it down and, and kind of letting the site kind of dictate the form, I think has been very successful. Uh, I think that the detailing uh, to what, you know, to the extent that we can see it looks like, looks promising, but I would ask them to look carefully, especially at window sills and window enframements. Uh, look at how, um, how it was done by, by flag and, and that, you know, that the window details should um, reinforce the quality of the design. Um, and I would also say that, you know, it, it, if the, the one, the one area for me that and it's, it's appropriate, I think as is, but the one area for me that strikes me as a little bit peculiar are these little flap dormers on the uh, two bottom elevations. And if the applicant could, you know, uh, I don't know, they, they just seem like they're crowded to the edges and kind of crowding those roofs. Um, if the, if you can drop the windows and just have it to go straight across, I think you'll have a much more flag-esque result, but I think it's appropriate as is. Thank you. Commissioner Chen? Yeah, I agree with what uh, Commissioner Goldblum just said and what uh, the rest of the commission have indicated before. This is much improved. Okay, all right. So I think that we have a um, consensus to approve. So um, um, I'll ask uh, Commissioner um, Shamir Barron, would you read the motion? Yes. Thank you. In the matter of LPC 21042479191 West Entry Road, Ernest Flags, Todd Hill Cottages, Bocot Individual Landmark. An empty lot subdivided from the original lot occupied by a cottage designed by Ernest Flag and built in 1918 and the application is to construct a new house. Uh, I note that several Ernest Flag designed houses in this area of Staten Island have been de designated as New York City landmarks, including his own estate at Todd Hill, known as Stone Court, 209 Flag Place, which includes a gatehouse, a gardener's cottage, a garage, a stable, and a greenhouse, all since converted to houses. Walcott at 205 Flag Place and the McCall Demonstration House at uh, at 1929 Richmond Road, that Flagg, though best known for his large institutional designs, was also interested in producing modest, attractive homes affordable to average Americans, that he developed innovative techniques towards the end, and in 1922, towards that end, and in 1922, published the book Small Houses, Their Economic Design and Construction, and that the small outbuildings and stone cottages was Flagg built on the periphery of his Todd Hill estate, including Bocott and Walcott allude to his vision that the area be developed with residences and detached outbuildings serving as examples of his economical design and construction principles. I further note that the homes flag design are modest, low to the ground with stone walls and often with steep roofs, distinctive uh, ridge dormers and round capped chimneys integrated with the landscape within the landscape. Flag generally considered surface uh, dormers and round capped chimneys integrate uh, sorry, generally considered surface uh, decoration a sham and preferred to suggest styles with the general form of the building adding, uh, adding interest with chimneys and dormers. I further note that the Landmarks Preservation Commission previously allowed the subdivision of a portion of the land occupied by Stone Court and the construction of single family houses on the resulting lots um, under Certificate of Appropriateness 84-0040, the Commission approved the construction of one single family house on a lot subdivided from the rear portion of the Ball Park Landmark site under Certificate of Appropriateness 085991, and that these houses have been built. I recommend approval, finding that the harmonious relationship of the natural site conditions, including plantings and topography and built form was an important aspect of Flag's design and the proposal supports this tenant by minimizing regrading, preserving mature trees and incorporating pervious materials and outdoor spaces in the site plan. That the form and massing of the proposed house in terms of its overall height, lot coverage, varied intersecting roof lines, roof lines and pitches curved ventilator caps, ridge dormers, and terraces is harmonious with the predominant massing and key design features the houses designed and built by Flag and houses constructed more recently on the Walcott and Ernest Flag House individual landmark sites. That the orientation of the proposed house towards West Entry Road 
its location on the lot and the distance between the proposed house and Bocot will respect the primacy of the Bocot individual landmark building. That the materials proposed for the facade and windows, including true stone veneer cladding, cementitious stucco, fiber cement siding with a painted finish, faux slate shingles, and an aluminum clad wood and aluminum clad wood windows will recall and relate sensitively to the cladding and roofing used on the smaller buildings designed by flag and the stone perimeter walls, the foundation walls and cladding of the Ernest Flag House. That the overall fenestration in terms of the predominant use of multi-light casement and awning windows organized in a regular bay pattern and in dormers is still is similar to the window patterns used by flag, helping the building to relate harmoniously to the adjacent house and that the work will not detract from the Bocon individual landmark. Thank you very much. And Commissioner Bland, would you second that motion? Second. Mark, will you call the vote? Chair Carroll. Aye. Commissioner Bland. Aye. Commissioner Shamir Barron. Aye. Commissioner Chapin. Aye. Commissioner Chen. Aye. Commissioner Goldblum. Aye. Commissioner Jefferson. Aye. Commissioner Lutfi. Aye. Commissioner uh, Holford Smith, oh, she, she's left. Um, so with, um, sorry, with eight in favor and none opposed, the motion passes. All right, that's approved, thank you. And that mm -hmm. concludes the public meeting portion of our agenda and we'll now begin the public hearing portion. That's right, we'll start with public hearing item number one, LPC 22-07196 an application for a certificate of appropriateness in the borough of Manhattan, block 567, lot 17, 22 East 10th Street in the Greenwich Village Historic District. This is a row house built in 1844, and the application is to alter the front facade, construct a rear yard addition, excavate the rear yard, and alter the party wall. Okay, commissioners, the applicants have entered the hearing. Uh, they now have control of the presentation. Uh, the applicant team may begin. Uh, please state your name for the record before you do so, thanks. Okay, hello, commissioners and landmark staff. Can you hear me all right? Great, thank you. Yes. Uh, my name is Jack. My name is Jackie Kuby Vallon, preservation consultant on the project. I'm here today with the architects Stephen Harris, John Wool, and Kevin Blusowitz of Stephen Harris Architects. The project we're showing you today is 22 East 10th Street, an 1844 late, late Greek Revival style row house. This house is being combined at the interior with 24 East 10th, uh, where a rear addition was recently approved. The two houses were built as part of a row, and now they are the last two houses remaining from that row. The proposal at the front facade includes removal of a, a coating from the brick facade, replacement of a special window at the East Bay on the second floor, at the basement and parlor floors, modifying the window opening and installing a new window with non-historic configuration and altering the parlor floor door surround. At the rear facade, the proposed work includes uh, removal of existing additions, construction of a rear addition, and excavation of the rear yard to lower its grade. <clears throat> uh, and also at uh, 24 East 10th Street, where a rear addition was recently approved, installing new windows um, at the previously uh, previous below grade level of that approved addition. And lastly, at the interior, removing the demising wall because the two houses are being combined into one, one residence. The intent of this proposal is to more, uh, to more closely return the front facade to its early 20th century appearance and to create an addition at the rear that better relates to the development pattern of additions within this block and to the addition that's already been approved at the rear of 24. Next slide, please. 22 East 10th stands at the south side of the street between University and Fifth Avenue. It's located at the northeastern edge of the Greenwich Village Historic District. Next slide. On the left is the front facade in its current condition. As I mentioned, it was built as one of a row with number 24 on its left. 22 and 24, as I mentioned before, are the last two houses from this row, and they have both been greatly altered over time. In the 1890s, 22 East 10th was uh, converted to bachelor apartments and the third floor ceiling was raised and the fourth floor was added. In the early 20th century, the window openings were combined at the front facade and enlarged at each floor 
and the four the four story rear L was constructed. In the second half of the 20th century, the parlor floor window was replaced and joined with the basement windows. On the right is the existing rear facade. Its four story L has uh, a two story addition next to it that steps back from the rear of the L, so they are not in the same plane. Next slide, please. Should I continue or should I wait to figure out where the sound interference is coming from? Oh, it seems to have stopped. It stopped. Okay, here we go. Um, where am I? Uh, on the left is the building in the 1940s tax photo. And on the right is the building at, uh, in the designation photo from 1968. You can see in the, the tax photo the alterations that were made at the front facade in 1916, the enlarged window openings at each floor, which featured uh, multi-light casements with transoms. Uh, it's not been determined exactly when the stoop was replaced or when the pilasters were, were removed from the entrance surround. It's hard to tell because the photos are not in color, but it does appear that the facade was painted in the 1940s tax photo and not painted in the 1968 photo. In the 1960s, the facade was altered at the basement of parlor floors and a multi-light window assembly was installed. The masonry that was installed below the parlor floor's lintel was just parched over. Next slide, please. Here's the existing and proposed front facade elevations. The intent is to return uh, this facade to its early 20th century appearance by restoring a separation between the basement and parlor floors and to restore pilasters at the entrance surround. The punched windows and rusticated brownstone stucco will be installed at the basement. The parlor floor window will be installed under the lintel again, but its sill will be lowered, uh, lower than, than what was um, present in the early 20th century. Uh, it is being dropped to more closely align with the original sill height of the original parlor floor windows. And the proposed multi-light windows will have a configuration that aligns with the windows at the floors above, rather than the paired multi-light casements that could be seen in the 1940s tax photo. The other work that's within the hearing scope uh, at the front facade includes restoring pilasters at the entrance surround and removing the paint from the facade. It's our argument that the, the date of the entrance alteration cannot be determined and that the paint should be removed simply because it is detrimental to the vapor permeability of the brick, in particular brick of this age. It would therefore be in the best interest of the long-term preservation of the building to allow it to, to be unpainted. Next slide, please. Here is that one window in question. It may be the last original window on this facade because the third floor's windows were made taller when that floor's ceiling was raised um, in conjunction with the addition of the fourth floor and because the other window openings were combined and enlarged. We don't have the detailed drawings yet, but the Munton dimensions and details would be replicated exactly. The only change would be that the meeting rail would have to get a little thicker, growing from one inch to one inch and five eighths. Next slide, please. Um, this project involves, involves the removal of the demising wall between the two structures because they are being combined into one residence. For example, here is the current first floor plan for, for both houses. Next slide, please. And here's the proposed first floor plan. While the demising wall is is being replaced, the perception of this historic division as viewed from the street will not change. LPC has already completed peer review of this change and the construction method to achieve it. Next slide, please. Here are historic maps that show how the interior of the block has changed over time. You'll note that the 1916 map shows the building at five stories because of the floor that was added in the 1890s and that its four story L appears with a one story addition next to it. Uh, next slide, please. And here's a block plan showing the footprint and heights of existing additions on the south side of the block, as well as photos of the locations that are keyed into that plan. Next slide. Here's a panorama photo taken from the rear of 6 East 10th Street, looking east, showing more shallow full width additions, as well as additions that go to the rear lot lines at some houses. Next slide. And we'd like to highlight the addition at 15 East 9th Street because it has window openings at the garden level that overlook the interior of the block. Next slide. 
Here's that block plan again, this time looking at the north side of the block with photos looking west from the rear yard of 24 East 10. You can see from this view, there's precedent for rear additions of varying depths. Next slide. And here's that same view looking west into the interior of the block with red dotted lines uh, outlining where there are additions that are a bit obscured by the trees. And on the right is the very tall apartment building at University Place that abuts 24 East 10. Next slide. I'm going to hand the presentation over to the architect in a moment, but before I do, I just want to ask you to keep in mind some recent approvals um, as you consider the proposed work at the rear of the house. This is 123 Washington Place, where three-story full width addition with large glazed openings was approved, as well as excavation of the rear yard. The grade at the rear yard was lowered by about two feet, creating a sunken garden. Next slide. And this is nine St. Luke's Place, excuse me, nine St. Luke's Place, which likewise recently received an approval for a three-story full width addition and a sunken garden. Its rear yard was lowered by two foot, five inches. And I would like to now introduce John Wool of Stephen Harris Architects to take you through the design. Good morning, commissioners. Um, in discussing this proposal, uh, looking at the rear, I think is where most of the work um, is, is underway. Um, interestingly, this project has allowed us an opportunity to reduce the massing and reduce the square footage of 22 East 10th Street. So the proposition opens up uh, this backyard in a way that currently, as you see on the right, is quite crowded with the four-story boot um, in addition to uh, the two-story uh, full-width addition and the existing fire escapes. Um, next. Uh, this is the existing condition to the left. Um, you'll see it's an all-painted facade. Um, the massing has the four-story uh, boot. It has the two-story full-width, and it has all of the fire escapes um, on the back wall. Um, our proposal is to remove um, that. So the, the four-story boot will be removed. Uh, the two-story addition is removed. Uh, we would like to replace it with a three-story addition that is full width um, pulled further back towards the house. Um, the three punched openings will be in line with the original openings um, on the original facade. Um, they are approximately five foot three inches wide. Um, they are approximately 11 feet tall on the parlor floor and about nine foot seven on the floor above that. Um, at the garden, it will be uh, one opening that will be divided into three subsections, mimicking to some extent uh, what happens above. Um, next. Um, probably best understood here by looking at an axonometric. Uh, to the left, you see uh, that 16 foot eight extension of uh, the four-story boot addition, which is crowding this whole area of the donut. Um, the removal of that um, allows us to then put uh, the three foot seven uh, deep full width addition on the lower three floors. Um, and then uh, the projecting um, uh, terrace um, on the parlor floor, which then extends out into the garden. Um, next. Uh, we are also proposing to lower the grade of the garden in order to make it align with uh, the finished heights of the spaces inside the house. Um, there is no structure being placed beneath the garden. It's simply a change of grade. Um, it will be planted um, and will remain part of the green space of this donut. It's being lowered by approximately three foot 11 at its most. Next. Um, again, comparing the existing and the proposed uh, you see here that we are adding um, uh, windows at the garden level once the removal of that fence is now possible since these are now joined as one property. So the removal of that fence is, is allowing us to put those low uh, windows in at the garden level. Um, you can see here as well the way that planting is being incorporated into our design uh, to unite it with that green space and to really open up uh, this corner of the donut. Next. In conjunction here, you see that the work in the front is, as Jackie indicated, uh, restoring this to uh, an earlier 20th century appearance um, in which uh, the large openings are remaining. Um, we are hoping to have the surround at the front 
um, match its twin on the remainder of those two of this terrace, um, keeping uh, the 20th century stoop design, but, but rebuilding it structurally um, and um, uh, removing the paint and uh, restoring the windows at the street level. And in the rear, um, the reduction uh, in massing um, by the removal of those additions and a reduction of about 940 square feet overall in the floor area of the building. Thank you. Thank you. All right, do we have any questions? Okay, I don't see any questions at this time, so we'll move to public testimony and we may have questions after that. So if you're in the meeting and would like to speak on this item, please raise your virtual hand so we can identify you. And I will turn it over to Sasha Seeley to take us through the testimony. Thank you. So for my sign up, I have Anna Markham from the Village of Preservation. Anna, you should be receiving a request from me now. Okay, Anna, I see you have accepted my request. Please just unmute your mic and state your name for the record. You have three minutes. Good morning, commissioners, and thank you for the opportunity to testify. My name is Anna Markham, and I'm the Director of Research and Preservation for Village Preservation. I am speaking on behalf of the organization today. Village Preservation commends the thoughtful and well-researched restoration of the street-facing elevation. However, we would like to see more specificity around the excavation portion of the project. In light of the recent loss of the, line, the nine landmark row houses at 4454 9th Avenue, 351-355 West 14th Street in the Gansport Market Historic District, we believe it is imperative that all applicants share as much detail as possible about excavation projects, including discussion of the potential risk to adjacent buildings along with the proposed safety monitoring and harm reduction strategies. Thank you. All right, thank you. Let me just take a glance back over and see if we have anyone else who wishes to speak on this item. And I do not see any more hands raised. So I will just add for the record that Manhattan Community Board 2 recommends approval of this application. And I will turn it back over to you, Chair Carroll. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, so I'd like to turn back to Jackie and John and see if you'd like to respond to the comments we've heard, particularly about the excavation. And I know you, did describe that um, we uh, are the engineer that LPC retains has reviewed the drawings. Um, but if you want to speak more specifically about the methods and uh, plans for monitoring, that's fine as well. Certainly, it's my pleasure to. Um, we, we have already engaged with an extensive process of review, not just with uh, the design engineer for the project, but the, the construction engineer. So the means and methods engineer who will be doing all of the temporary shoring, all of the support of excavation, all of that has been prepared and shared with the LPC's reviewing peer, architect, peer engineer. Um, we've had a, a constructive dialogue and I believe everyone is satisfied um, that those concerns, which are absolutely legitimate concerns, um, have been addressed and everyone is comfortable that, that this can proceed. Okay. And uh, is Silman your engineer? Silman is the engineer, as is um, Silman is the engineer of, of design, and um, the um, means and methods engineer is Plan B. Um, both of whom have worked together as a team on other projects of this scale in this district. Okay, great. Thank you, Commissioner Shamir Barron. Uh, yes, I just have a question about the front street facade. And did you uh, maybe you said, and forgive me if I didn't hear it, um, is the brick going to be cleaned, uh, replaced, w what is happening to the brick? And, um, uh, and I'm assuming that the, uh, that the building that we approved next door previously, that was the paint was um, removed. What's being done to the brick? Yes, the, we are proposing to remove the brick on this paint. house as well, number 22. The, the uh, paint, Jackie, the paint. The paint. What did I just say? The, the brick, <laughs> no, the paint <laughs> of the brick. <laughs> removing the paint, my bad. Oh my gosh. Um, yes, removing the paint. There might be, um, you know, you never really know what you're going to find until you get into construction. There might be a uh, brick that needs to be replaced at select locations. Um, yes, that, continuing to correct myself. Has that work been done next door already? It has not begun, but it's been approved. Uh, paint removal has been appro approved next door. 
Sorry, sorry, I'm, I, I'm sorry for interrupting. That's okay. I'm just asking if any of the work has begun so that you might be able to understand what, what the condition of the brick behind the paint is, or that's not been done yet. Um, no. Commissioner, it has not yet begun, um, but uh, we are in the process of beginning that, but we have not yet begun the, the brick restoration work uh, and the removal of the paint on 24. Okay, and, since, and on uh, 22, because that facade was raised, um, I would expect that there would be a slightly different brick. Yeah, um, I'm curious, I'm curious. <laughs> So what happens if the top floor is a very different brick? You can see the line and uh, from the brick below and what would your in intent be here? Our, our intent would be to preserve its history. Uh, my, my general thought is, look, it's a quality transformation of that building. It was not done without thought. And I would think that someone would have attempted to find a brick that was harmonious with the original. Um, but I expect it wouldn't be surprised if there is some mild transition between uh, the 20th century brick and the 19th century brick. Okay. All right. Other questions? All right. Let's then make a move to close the hearing and begin our discussion. So Commissioner Chapin, would you make a motion to close the hearing? So moved. Thank you. And Commissioner Lutfi, would you second that motion? Second. All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. So we'll begin our discussion um, and the applicants laid out the scope um, and there's work uh, both on the front facade, including removing the paint, shifting the parlor floor window back up, introducing uh, two punched openings at the basement level and uh, changing the door surround. <laughs> and then at the back, removing the existing additions uh, pulling, uh, doing a new three-story addition that's less deep, excavating to lower the rear yard, and on the interior, the removal of the demising wall or the party wall, which um, from the street, I think you have new walls in, in the uh, similar location. So I think your point was from the street, it would not be perceptible. And our engineer, uh, Don Friedman from Old Structures has reviewed it with all of this work with your engineers as well. So we'll begin our discussion. Uh, Commissioner Jefferson, would you like to start this one? Sure, sure. Um, it's, it's extremely well done. I think the exterior spaces, the circulation of the exterior spaces, the way, uh, the way they're arranged in plan and in section is very well done. I think the, the, the rear of this is a wonderful example of but it's possible. And um, so I can approve this. The front facade, I don't know the, the I don't know if, if they can remove the paint and, and, and have a facade that's harmonious and consistent, I can approve it too. So on a whole, I can approve the whole project. Okay, great, thank you. Commissioner Gustafson. Yeah, I, I was with on the on the front. I I agree with uh, Commissioner Jefferson. The, the paint removal is the only uh, issue of concern, and I and there they can um, as they move along, they can work with our staff to figure out um, the best solution on that. Uh, otherwise, the changes on the front facade I think are um, are, are, a, are are an improvement, um, and they um, and they bring it back to at least partway to um, where it. Um, uh, where it started, um, I'm okay with the uh, excavation, and I'm, and I think that what they've done with the back of this, uh, uh, the the rear yard, um, uh, the word I, that came came to mind is um, uh, even though they're doing a lot, it calms the back of the building uh, substantially, um, and uh, and it is with, well within the character of the uh, rear yard additions and in the uh, in this uh, in this donut. So um, I find it to be appropriate. Okay, thank you. Commissioner Shamir Barron. Yes, I agree. I think the work on the rear is really successful, just like the first project, this second one, this expansion, just brings out the, the, the least attractive envy in me <laughs> for these um, <laughs> the applicants. The Kasdans are very lucky to, to be doing this and it's an extraordinary project. I think that 
in the front facade is the only area that I'm just a little bit concerned about still. I think that there needs to be real careful attention as I'm sure these architects will oversee properly um, of the paint removal. I think that the, that the, the answer to your question Chair Carroll was the right one, that if there is um, a kind of difference between the addition, you know, the added uh, level um, in terms of the brick, that should, I would think, read. And in fact, I think that there should be the ability to really read the differences between the two buildings, the differences in, in, in vintage and, and other aspects of the two buildings side by side so that we can still understand them as distinct and having their own um, you know, age and history. So th that's, that's important and I think they need to really keep an eye on that. But I think this project is just so beautiful um, and I think it's absolutely appropriate. Great, thank you. Commissioner um, Ch uh, Chapin. Uh, I think this is a great project. Uh, I agree with others that <clears throat> they have very sensitively uh, uh, you know, uh, handled the, uh, and successfully handled the back. And I think that the way they have dealt with the front facade uh, to reflect uh, the building's history is very appropriate and uh, shows the development of the facade um, over time in a, in a very uh, sensitive way. So uh, I can approve this as presented. I think it's, it's very fine. Okay, thank you. Commissioner Goldblum? Uh, I agree. I think it's appropriate as, as presented. It's, an, it's uh, I, I agree with the other people who are saying that, uh, that you know, we gotta watch the thing. Okay. Commissioner Chen? Yeah, same here. I think he is, this is very successfully done. And, um, and uh, as Michael Goldblum just said, uh, uh, let's watch the paint analysis. Okay, Commissioner Bland? Um, for about 28 years, my office was 200 feet from this house um, and uh, or these two houses. So I know it very well. Um, um, and I want to point out that number 22 was the house of Ed Edgar Taffel, who was the um, prime follower of Frank Lloyd Wright in our, in our area. Um, I think it was he who changed those windows and this was his studio and gallery. And I once visited him there in that space. Um, you know, so I have to wonder, is it appropriate? It clearly is, I'm the last, nearly the last one to speak. So it's gonna be appropriate. But I had to stop and think because of his importance is, is that change uh, worthy of, uh, of, you know, continuing to show the layering of history, let's call it. Um, I, I think not, but I, I, I just did want to say that nobody else had mentioned this yet. So I, I thought we should do it. Uh, we should at least have that on the record <laughs> that this was Edgar Taffel's house and he's an important architect. Um, it, the, um, this gives me pause, you know, uh, this combining these gargantuan new spaces inside and all but I guess that has nothing to do with our approval, but it still does, I have to say, give me pause, mostly I suppose on a social level, which doesn't uh, count here uh, as, an, as a, a preservation um, district issue. Um, and what everybody else has said is certainly true. Um, this is an incredibly suave uh, essay of, uh, of, 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 of a series of, of, uh, uh, of articulations of windows and, 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 and um, massing on the rear that of course is a level which was uh, never ever contemplated in the past, but I suppose um, it's, it's so well done if, if not over well done that we, we can't say it's inappropriate um, but I, I do find it a little, a little much myself, even though it is so well done. All that I felt I needed to say, but I'm not going to vote against it um, I, because I think it is so, uh, but I do think it is very suave. I'll leave it at that. <laughs> Thank you. All right, Commissioner Lutfi. 
First of all, Fred, thank you for that history. It, it's great to know that, and it gives me a little pause as well. Uh, but it's uh, wonderful information. Uh, I do feel like the applicant has done an excellent job of uh, working on the project and um, integrating uh, the back of this of this townhouse with the one next to it. It's a seamless, it looks good. The excavation makes sense. Um, and I also feel that the work on the front has brought the property back uh, more closely to where it was originally. I feel that, I know that the Appleton School going to be working closely with staff and I recommend that on the paint removal, but uh, I agree with what Addie said, which is that, um, you know what, if there's a difference between uh, the color of the bricks, so be it. And I think it should show because it shows the history of the, um, uh, and the aging of the buildings. And we, we oftentimes, we advocate for that. We want the build, we want side by side buildings that are being combined to read distinct, you know, as distinct buildings. So that's okay with me. I do also happen to agree with uh, Fred that when I look at the project as a whole, as nice as it is and as well done as it is, that does give me pause. It is uh, a mammoth project, and then I think of other projects, um, much like one of the uh, projects this morning where people are trying to do a rooftop addition and they can't manage to get it up, you know, get it done with minimal visibility. So uh, I'm having a hard time reconciling that, but uh, I can approve, I'm happy to approve this project. Okay, thank you. Yeah, and I think, you know, those are all good points. And I do want to thank Fred for raising the Edgar Taffel history. I think that was um, interesting and helpful to know. Um, and I think Commissioner Lutfi, you know, trying to reconcile one application to another, I mean, each has different site conditions. So this one is in a block that is very dense with a variety of additions. And so I think one, and while the other one was a rooftop addition, um, and that's not the case here, but I think that the, um, you know, the, the contexts allow for a different set of criteria to be used and thought about. And so I think in the context of this block with varied additions and varied rear yard spaces and, and some back houses, um, I think one can find this consistent with our past approvals uh, at the rear of buildings. And I think, you know, the combining of the two inside, I think this is always kind of an, people have, you know, an interesting thing for us because people have personal feelings about it. But from an appropriateness point of view, we have, of course, approved it many times, but the, you know, we've looked at the party wall to ensure that there is enough there that um, from the street, the the, the fact that it's two buildings is still discernible. And of course, looking very carefully at the structural impacts of that proposed work. So, and I think in this case, both of those are addressed. And so I think, um, you know, I am comfortable with it as being consistent with other approvals that we've done. So I do think we have um, a support here to move ahead with an approval. Commissioner Jefferson, would you make a motion to approve? the project and then just add the condition at the end that they continue to work with the staff as they remove the paint um, to, to determine uh, you know, the appropriate methodology and um, results. Sure. Sure. Um, in the matter of LPC-22-0, Zero seven one ninety six, twenty two East Tenth Street, Greenwich Village Historic District. Application is to alter the front facade, construct a rear yard addition, excavate the rear yard, and alter the party wall. I note 
that the building style, scale, and material and details are among the features that contribute to the spe special architectural and historical character of the Greenwich Village Historic District. Staff also notes that the fa facade was significantly altered in the early 20th century. I recommend approval with modifications, finding that the removal of non-historic infillet at the basement and parlor floors and modification to the height the height of the parlor floor windows opening will return the primary facade closer to its significant early 20th century appearance as evidenced by historic photographs that the proposed parlor floor window assembly will match the historic upper floor window in terms of configuration, operation, detail, material, and finish. That the proposed wood paneled primary double leaf door with glazed transom will be in keeping with the typical doors typically found at row houses of a similar age and style within the historic district. That the proposed partial removal of the party wall between the two buildings will combine into will combine it is limited to the interior and therefore will not damage or destroy any significant exterior architectural features of the building's facade or roof and will be removed in compliance with the Department of Building Regulations under the supervision of a licensed professional engineer to protect the building and the adjacent buildings that the proposed work at the very job would, will not be visible from any public therapy. That the demolition of the existing rear extension and the construction of a new rear yard addition will not damage or destroy any significant architectural feature of the building. That the proposed two-story plus basement addition will, pro will project minimally into the rear yard and will not significantly diminish the block's central green space that the material and finish of the rear addition, featuring brick cladding, punch masonry openings, and metal railings would be in keeping with rear yard extensions that found within the block and throughout the district. That the proposed excavation of the entire rear yard would be conducted in compliance with the Department of Buildings regulations under the supervision of a licensed professional engineer to protect the buildings, facade, and the adjacent buildings, that the green space will be maintained on top of the excavated area mm -hmm. to allow for the possibility of future significant planting. And that this block features a variety of conditions at the rear yards, including a number of full depth extensions, masonry walls, and secondary structures. Therefore, changing the grade of the rear yard will not distract from the coherent green space. However, I find that the prior removal of the original Greek revival door in frame. No, Commissioner Jefferson, that um, is not one of the recommendations. So I think we just need to end with a recommendation that they continue to work with the staff on the paint removal uh, to ensure the, uh, the uh, underlying brick is in satisfactory and uh, historic condition. Okay. Um, and that's it. I recommend, okay. I recommend that uh, uh, the architect continue to work with the staff to uh, uh, to work with the staff and, uh, with the, the paint removal. Paint removal, and um, what's the other one? With the staff and the paint removal, and, uh, and I think yeah. that's it. Okay, okay, great, Commissioner Chen. Would you second that motion? Second. Mark, will you call the vote? Chair Carroll? Aye. Commissioner Bland? Aye. Commissioner Shamir Barron? Aye. Commissioner Chapin? Aye. Commissioner Chen? Aye. Commissioner Goldblum? Aye. Commissioner Gustafson? Aye. Commissioner Jefferson? Aye. Commissioner Lutfi? Aye. With nine in favor and none opposed, the motion passes. That's approved. And please do continue to work with the staff as you uh, remove the paint from the facade. And good luck. Thank you, Thank commissioners. you commissioners. Okay, we'll now move to the next items. Um, there are three of them being presented together. I will read these in, in kind of a hybrid manner. Uh, item 2, LPC 22-07517. 417 West 20th Street, 
the Chelsea Historic District. This is Block 718, Lot 99 in the Borough of Manhattan. Item 3, LPC 22 07518, 419 West 20th Street, Chelsea Historic District, Block 718, Lot 98 in the Borough of Manhattan. And Item 4, LPC 22 03633. 421 West 20th Street, Chelsea Historic District, Block 718, Lot 97 in the Borough of Manhattan. All three are applications for a certificate of appropriateness. Um, and uh, this is a, a building that is a freestanding faculty house built in 1892 with, within an ensemble of English collegiate Gothic style buildings built largely between 1883 and 1902, designed primarily by Charles Coolidge Haight. Uh, and the application is to install ironwork at the uh, at the stoop and or entrances at all three locations. Okay, commissioners, the applicants have entered the hearing. Huntley, you now have uh, control of the presentation. You just need to click on your screen and then you can advance the slides using your arrow keys. Uh, please state your name for the record. You may begin. Sure, my name is um, Huntley Gill with Guardia Architects and um, <laughs> We're going from a very large project on 10th Street to a very small project on West 20th Street. Um, these, um, this is a proposal to add um, conforming uh, ironwork at three um, stoops uh, on these wonderful, wonderful buildings. This is where I would live if I were a very rich man. Um, on the north side of West 20th Street towards 9th Avenue, part of uh, the Theological Seminary, originally now three separate houses, three separate clients have engaged us to, um, to add um, ironwork to these steps. There's a very serious uh, homeless problem here that has uh, manifested itself over the last couple of years. Um, you have a couple of letters in the record talking about that issue. And I'm, I'm always a little concerned about um, um, trying to do things like this because usually, of course, New York Row House, the essence of the New York Row House is repetition. So if you try and put a gate on one house out of 20, say, I just don't think it works. In this instance, these are three houses and with very similar stoops, um, uh, uh, steps and entrances. And um, this work will be done on all three. So that aspect doesn't particularly concern me. We also have, um, designed this in a way that's uh, very simple and reversible. Um, I would also point out that you have in the past, in 2011, you approved extensive changes to the ironwork on these houses um, for a proposal by Bayer Blinder Bell. Most of the work was in the rear yard in the close because these had gone from being faculty housing to being individual houses, so they were enclosed with, um, with conforming ironwork. Uh, as you can see in this plan, um, to reflect that fact, and it also cleaned up a bunch of kind of, you know, the, the sort of things that schools are wont to do, really horrible lifts and the like. Um, uh, one thing that, um, this is the existing, this was the condition in the close before, and um, this is the, oops, sorry. That's the condition after the work that you reviewed and approved in 2011 was done. Um, one thing I also want to mention that is oddly enough in this street, um, this is one street, wonderful houses, mostly Greek revival, where um, by far the majority of the um, steps are fenced. Um, and that's an unusual condition in Manhattan. Um, I have some photographs of them, but they didn't make them into the presentation. Um, what we're proposing is the very, it's, it's actually, it works out quite nicely. What we're proposing is to add this ironwork. You'll note that we've uh, restricted it to just two simple posts into the brownstone, which brownstone has already been restored. So it counts as a pretty easily reversible intervention if possible, uh, if need be. And what also works out really nicely is that this design, we've included this curve to reflect the curve and the step, the curve and the ironwork adjacent. And all the heights work out to be exactly the same. In other words, each of these bits of ironwork rise the same two foot eight inches above the brownstone, um, which makes the whole composition actually work rather nicely. And it's not always possible to do that. Um, here's a rendering of um, the condition uh, from head on. And you can see we've also been careful to make everything align so that everything kind of has its little rhythm to it. And it's designed so that these gates can be left open at 90 degrees, um, especially during the day. 
uh, if need be, and and so and that they won't look kind of ajar. They'll look like they're meant to be open. Um, elevation plan, and then this, uh, you know a full set. That's basically it. Okay, um, and we do have some questions. Thank you, Commissioner Jefferson. Um, yes, uh, in in this Chelsea historic district. Can you show me examples of stoops that have gates on them in the district? Because I, uh, is, this, is this something that's typical in the district? It's, I'd have to go, I haven't, um, I haven't gone around taking pictures of stoops around the district that have gates. I know that there are many. I could certainly do that if that's something that's helpful. I will note that this, um, almost the, the vast majority of this block is gated, usually not at the steps themselves, but in front. Um, the houses are set back a little bit. They were clearly, some of them are magnificent. Some of them have these incredible anthemians and the like, but they also clearly were not original to the houses. So there's a history of this block almost uniquely of adding gates after the houses go up, if that answers your question. The distinction in my mind is that this is only one step up or two steps up. It's exactly. not. And, but it, and so I wanted to see if there was examples of that um, in the district, but we don't have any. I, I, don't, I don't happen to have them. I could get some. I mean, I have to comment that I think that it's easier to do a gate at a kind of an English staff like this than there is to a high Dutch stoop. I think it works better. And in this instance, because everything aligns with all the adjacent ironwork, I mean, the houses here, both these three houses and the entire north side of 20th Street is gated. Well, I'm, I'm just, because it's a historic district and this is right. a very strange, right. this is a social issue that I think 18th, 19th century, it always been there. So now we're putting up a gate. So that's my concern. And perhaps that's nothing to do with the issue of the gate itself, but I just wanted an example. Okay. I can certainly get some. Mr. Gil, do you have photographs in this presentation that show the streetscape? I mean, as you point out, these are not row houses. This was an institutional building. It was faculty housing. Um, but across the street from you, there are a lot of row houses. And I know you were talking about uh, ironwork in front of all of those row houses. And if you have some streetscape photos, that would help. I have them on my computer. I don't have them in the presentation. Okay. Do you want me to share it? If I, if I can share my screen, I can show them. Um, no, I think, well, let's... Um, take some more questions and we'll see if it's, well, because it's it, it's a process to have you share your screen on top of ours. So we'll see sure. if we need to go there. Okay, Commissioner Chapin followed by Commissioner Lutfi. Thank you. I wanted to ask about the position of the gate uh, and why you decided to put it where it is and, you know, take it sort of in between. In other words, instead of having the gate at to, to be flush with the gates at the sides, uh, or not the gates, the fencing at the side, uh, and then, you know, have the curved approach to the gate uh, somewhat higher on another, on another step, or back on the step, rather. So right. if Maybe you could just could go to stick to the design. Maybe if we could go to the rend rendering, it might be um, easier to explain Thank that. You. Thank you. If you take a look at this, there are two different heights. In other words, the gate that goes runs perpendicular to the building is at one height, although again, it's a consistent two foot eight above the brownstone from which it rises. And right. here. So the idea, and you can see how these gates curve as they come along, um, along with the steps. So our thought mm -hmm. was that this could be halfway in between. You didn't want it full height, that would make it too dominant. You didn't want it at this height because it would read sort of like you're trying to continue that fence. You're not, you're, it's a separate element. And it curves back in to tie into one of the posts perfectly. And it, I like, I mean, I really am fond of the way that all kind of worked out myself. Does that answer your question? Uh, I think, yes, I, I think so. Uh, you know, obviously there are a number of different decisions. I assume you, you feel that a gate is needed uh, 
to keep because it's no longer institutional, but residential. So you wanted to not have it, you'd prefer to not have maybe people coming up on the steps, you know, which would have been another alternative uh, just from a use point of view also. Uh, okay, thank you. Okay, and Commissioner Lutfi, Commissioner Lutfi, did you have a question? I am, um, my question was answered, but I, but I did want to say in connection to uh, Everardo's question, is there any way we can just put up a street view of Google Maps because it, yeah. show, it shows the block if, yeah. we, if we rotate? Yeah. So we do, I don't know, the applicant did submit to the staff a photograph of Cushman Row across the street, which is, he says, has continuous fencing all the way down the block. And, uh, you know, I don't know why it wasn't in the presentation, but it's Abby. Fault, I said it in okay, so this is what is across the street, Cushman Row, which has uh, continuous fencing all the way down the street. Mm -hmm. And then on this, on the, on the same side of the row as the subject buildings, um, there are openings looking into the close and then other institutional buildings, which, um, so not a row, uh, context of row houses on the side of the street that the applicant application is on, um, but this is what is across the street from it. Thank you. And I would comment that I suspect that part of the homeless problem on this block, and, and you know, they've had literally encampments here with tents set up. <laughs> one guy fell into the door of Dean Amro's house when he opened it one morning to get the paper. And I think maybe part of the problem is that everything else in on the street is gated. And, and it's that that leaves these is the only steps that are kind of open at night for the homeless, unfortunately. Okay, and I think, um, Ab I wonder if Abby, if you wanted, um, is, it, can, is it easy enough to quickly go to street view so we can have a sort of a 360 view on the street? Sure, give me one second. And while Abby's doing that, I might point out that even the new buildings on the 10th Avenue end have, <laughs> have gates. So it's not just, it's not just Greek revival, it's, it's a consistent pattern all the way down the block. Okay, so so these are the these are the buildings here. Yes. Yes. And you want to see. And then, so just uh, just to for everybody to understand the context. So there's no there are no uh, row houses. Whoops, Abby, hang on a sec. No row houses on the north side of the street. You have the, the, the subject building, which uh, was faculty housing, and then a new commission approved building, whoops, to the right, which we just went out of view, yep. And then to the left, there is um, more open space looking into the close. And then I believe there's another commission approved building and then the avenue building. So there is no con continuous, oh, and there's, uh, yeah, there's one more. There's the church, which has uh, fencing in front of it. And then another uh, former theological seminary building, general theological seminary building with a wall in front of it. And then the new building. And then across the street are row houses with um, a variety of fences, including uh, ones that go in front of stoops. There's one there. And then, um, of course, the Cushman Row 
which has the continuous fencing um, that we saw in the prior photograph. Okay, thank you, Abby. So let's see if there are other questions, commissioners. All right, um, why don't we move to public testimony and we may have more questions after that. So if you're in the meeting and would like to testify on this item, please raise your virtual hand so we can identify you. And I will turn it over to Sasha Seely to take us through the testimony. Already, thank you. So I do have Carrie Keenan from Manhattan Community Board 4. Carrie, you should be receiving a request from me now. Okay, Carrie, I see that you have joined the meeting and now you're able to just please unmute your mic and state your name for the record. You have three minutes. Hi, thank you. Good morning, commissioners. I'm Carrie Keenan, co-chair of Community Board 4's Chelsea Land Use Committee. On April 6th, um, Community Board 4 voted to recommend a denial of the certificate of appropriateness for the addition of gates at the front stoops of 417, 419, and 421 West 20th Street on the seminary block. The seminary block was donated to the Episcopal Church by Chelsea's founder, Clement Clark Moore, to serve as the town square for his planned community. Transoms above the doors to these three row houses still bear the addresses 2, 3, and 4 Chelsea Square, as the block was known long after notable architect Charles Coolidge Haight's transformation of the campus in picturesque English collegiate Gothic style during the 1880s and 90s. The three row houses are of his design built to house faculty. Their entrances harmonize with very similar Haight design entrances further west on the block. The houses were sold to private owners in 2011, at which time their private rear yards were fenced off from the adjacent seminary grounds. As you heard, the stated reasons for the application is that the houses owners report homeless people trespassing on their stoops and wish to protect their homes from infringement of their property. While this applicant's architect argued that the gates would be consistent with historic row house gates across 20th Street, those, those buildings are of an earlier Greek revival style. Their gates stand well forward of the entrances and were conceived from the start as integral extensions of their garden fences. The more pertinent context is that, that of the seminary itself, where no grade level building entrance is gated, including very similar entrances with which the seminary row house entrances are thematic. The steps and railings of Haight's row house entrance curve into the sidewalk, creating a benign expression of openness and welcome. The proposed gates have an effect far beyond their physical presence, throwing a barrier across Haight's inviting entrances. Although the applicant's architect has suggested the gates could remain open, he stated there was no promise they will. The applicant was asked to provide evidence of loitering or trespassing in the form of photographs, police reports, calls to 311 or otherwise, and none was provided. Additionally, there was a discussion around alternative methods to dissuade trespassing and increase the owner's sense of safety, such as lighting, cameras, intercom, et cetera. But the applicant did not feel these were suitable for consideration. Lastly, nearby residents and neighbors report that there is very little of such issues on 20th Street and numerous community members attended the committee and full board meetings to request a denial of the application. In conclusion, the stated reason for the addition of gates does not merit a permanent change to these top tier historic landmark buildings and CB4 recommends denial of a certificate of appropriateness. Thank you so much. Um, let me take a glance over. Pamela Wolf from Save Chelsea. You should be receiving a request from me now. Okay, Pamela, I see you've accepted my request. Please just unmute your mic and state your name for the record. You have three minutes. Good morning, commissioners. I am Pamela Wolf, president of Save Chelsea. Safe Chelsea strongly opposes the application to install gates at the entrances to 417, 19, and 21 West 20th Street in the heart of the Chelsea Historic District, one of New York's finest blocks. The gates would destroy the open and welcoming character of original architect Charles Coolidge Haight's row house entrances. The renderings of the existing and proposed conditions make this painfully clear at a glance. Clement Clark Moore planned the seminary block as the heart of his community. It is a rare triumph that hate transformed it without sacrificing the public benefit Moore envisioned. There is no more sensitive location in Chelsea. 
Presenting a community board for the applicant's architect cited as a precedent, the introduction of fencing within the close behind the row house group. That was justified by the seminary sale of the row houses to private owners. That fencing separates the newly established private property from the private property of the seminary and is not visible from the public way. There is no corresponding change in ownership type at the front of the houses, which remain an interface between private and public property. The applicant's architect also claimed the gates would be contextual with those of the earlier row houses across 20th Street. It makes no sense to match Haight's collegiate Gothic row house entrances with these much earlier Greek revival row house entrances while mismatching them with the other building entrances on the unified set piece seminary block itself, none of which have gates. Haight's row houses, row house entrances are three of five very similar thematic entrances fronting 20th Street, part of an overall picturesque ensemble designed for public enjoyment. That is the critical context. Haight's original design intent was clearly to make the entrances feel contiguous, continuous with the sidewalk into which their curved steps and railings flow. Their shape is echoed in the curves of the entrance door and framements. The deep recess of the doors further suggests an inviting sense of being drawn in. Every piece works in concert. The proposed gates feel like a police barricade negating Haight's entire design direction. It couldn't be clearer that he never meant these entrances to have <laughs> gates. We have witnessed no particular homeless presence in this part of the neighborhood of Chelsea. The proposed gates may be more a function of new owners than of the homeless. It would be a real shame if after surviving New York's most <coughs> crime ridden decades intact, Haight's gift to the street was forever marred by gentrification. Thank you. Thank you. All right, Missy Adams. You should be receiving a request from me now. All right, Missy, I see you've accepted my request. Please just unmute your mic and state your name for the record. You have three minutes to speak. Hi, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Just state your name for the record, please. Okay, terrific. Uh, my name is Missy Adams. I have lived at uh, Ninth Avenue, uh, near 20th Street for uh, about 25 years. So I've seen the neighborhood in very bad times when there were drug dealers on the corner and transvestite prostitutes to now when it is a very, very different neighborhood. But I, um, and I, I know um, the residents in the houses of, um, uh, that are being considered uh, not the Brodskys, of course, but the others, and, and they're very lovely people, so I, I hesitate to speak up, but I, I feel I have to, um, because those proposed fences um, won't protect anything. I mean, honestly, they, they're, uh, they won't keep the homeless out. There really aren't any homeless that, that go there, because there's so much foot traffic along that, that road. Uh, it's, um, people could still access the stoops, so the fences as they're designed would in fact afford protection to someone looking to camp there. Um, honestly, I haven't seen anyone hanging out or sleeping on the stoops anywhere on the block. Uh, the homeless actually go to the restaurant structures when they wanna sleep or do anything. Uh, so it, it's just not a problem there. Uh, I also have to point out that the fences would spoil the look of the houses they would no longer match the stoops down at the Highline Hotel, which were part of the seminary. Uh, I don't know why they've been left off of any of the visuals, but they match the stoops almost exactly. And they don't have fencing and they're beautiful. And there's just no need for the fencing. Um, the fencing would, you know, added, would repudiate the intent of the original design, which was to be open and accessible. It was the, the conflating fencing along the block with the south side, which is a very, very different, Cushman Row is a very different uh, design. And the picture with the white columns, I think was incorrect. That's not Cushman Row, but the Google, the Google um, pictures were correct. 
But uh, Cushman Row is very different. They have gardens in the front. There aren't gates on the stoops. Uh, there are gates, there are fences in front. Uh, it's, it's a totally different design. The design of the, of the um, seminary houses were supposed to be open and accessible and, uh, and putting them there is really just creating more of a gated community. I mean, they, they have access through the inside. They don't have to deal with the homeless or anyone. Uh, it's, it, it all comes down to, we have a homeless problem. It can't be solved with a fence. Don't spoil these beautiful buildings. Thank you. Right. Christina Britton Conroy from Victorian Society of New York. You should be receiving a request from me now. Okay, Christina, I see you've accepted my request. Please just unmute your mic and state your name for the record. You have three minutes. Okay. Good morning, commissioners. I'm Christina Conroy for the Victorian Society in New York. Now founded in New York in 1966, the Victorian Society in America is dedicated to fostering the appreciation and preservation of our 19th and early 20th century heritage. The New York chapter promotes preservation of our historic districts, individual landmarks, interiors, and civic art. The applicants for these three adjacent buildings are proposing the installation of three atypical stoop gates. Commissioners, while late 19th century brownstones typically featured high stoops, which raised them above the streets, these faculty houses have a much more open, welcoming character with short flights of low steps leading to broad stoops and wide double doors. The proposed gates, though matching the existing ironwork, end up obscuring the handsome painted wood doors and historic brownstone arches, inappropriately altering the relationship of these three buildings to the street. A simple chain, which tells people this is private property, is a better solution. Thank you. Thank you. All right, Michelle Arbelu from Historic District Council. You should be receiving a request from me, Michelle. Okay, Michelle, I see you've accepted my request. Please just unmute your mic and state your name for the record. You have three minutes. Hello, commissioners. Michelle Arbelou for the Historic Districts Council. HDC appreciates the sensitivity of the ironwork design and perhaps the impetus for proposing it. However, we believe that this sort of insertion into fabric is anti-urban. Stoops are the city's great threshold elements. They mediate between the public realm and private space. Clogging that up with a gate spoils this wonderful device. We ask the LPC to decline this application. Thank you. Thank you. Let me just take a glance back over and see if we have any more hands raised. And I do not see that there is anyone else who wishes to speak on this item. So I will turn it back over to you, Chair Carol. Okay, thank you. And um, I am going to turn back to the applicant and ask if you'd like to respond to all the comments we've heard. And, um, and then we do have some more questions. So, but first, let's go to uh, Mr. Gill. Sure. I mean, I, I want to. <laughs> Um, I guess as the community board, the big issue is whether or not there's a need for this. You have a couple letters in the record from the owners, you know, discussing that. Um, the rest of the block, if you go down, the block has signs, do not trespass, do not come in on their gates. And I think there's clearly a need for it. The, uh, <coughs> the community board suggested um, bright lights or alarms or the like instead of this, um, which we pointed out. Um, neither is, is, well, neither one is very neighborhood friendly, um, nor do either of them, nor are either of them allowed by code. We've investigated this at other properties. Um, there are no other um, stoops or uh, steps or entrances that are similar to this on the north side of the block. The entire north side of the block is gated. The entire north side of the block is gated, including entrances to the close. Um, the, <laughs> The suggestion that the owners use their back door rather than their front door because people are camping out on the steps strikes me as a little bit disingenuous. And I also just want to say that if I weren't convinced that this design was really an appropriate design, I wouldn't have brought it to the, to the commission. I mean, I think it really does work and it makes my heart sing. And that's, that's a hard thing. It's, I, you can't often say that about this sort of thing. So I hope that you'll take these owners at their you know, uh, 
at their best. They've been, they're not particularly new owners. They've owned these buildings for 11 years. So they are neighbors. I hope you'll take them at their word that this is important. This is an expensive, difficult process. And uh, they would not be going through this if they, if they weren't a need for it. So I would hope you would not focus on the issue of need and accept the owners at, the, at face value and focus on the architectural um, treatment of this, which I think merits approval. Okay, thank you. And uh, Commissioner Goldblum, I think you have a question or two. Yeah, I did. Um, a couple of the people in the, who offered testimony made a suggestion um, and made some observations about the, the nature of the uh, the fence that I wanted to just ask you more directly. Um, obviously the fence can be you know, climbed over. It's not seven or eight feet tall. Um, so it's, its function is to keep people from, I assume, sitting on the stoop or you know, sitting on the flat part of the stoop. Um, could that be accomplished with a chain or with a lower fence? Well, I don't think, I mean, I don't think a chain I don't think a chain is appropriate anyway, but no, I'm not sure it could be accomplished. And I think this is, I mean, we considered lowering this fence to the level <laughs> of the adjacent um, fence. So that it would be shorter than that. But it just, if you, if you look at it in a drawing, it doesn't, it just doesn't work right. I mean, that's why we did it this way. And I have to say that I, you know, I really do like the way this composition works. I think it tells you exactly what it's doing. And what it's all about. And as to a practical matter, um, I can tell you that um, when you call 311 or 911, if um, they find somebody behind a uh, closed fence, they will indeed treat it as trespassing. Whereas if there's no fence there, I can tell you based on experience, I'm also president of the Columbus so Urban Business Improvement District, so I <laughs> deal with these issues a lot, then they tend to treat this as somebody sleeping in a public place. So it really does help with enforcement. Thank you. Okay, and, and just to follow up on that question about lowering it, um, and I know it's this would be very awkward and they'd have to swing out, which may not be allowed under code, but if did you look at putting it on the step so that it is maybe only as high as the adjacent? Well, I, I think if, if the commission felt that the fence, the gate in its current place and plan would read better um, being low, lowered to the same height as the adjacent fence parallel to the building. I mean, we could certainly do that. I just didn't like the way it looked as well, but I think, you know, and we could draw it um, as well, take a look at it. Okay, and if it were to sit on the bottom step, obviously there's operability issues with the swing, but would it be coplanar with the fences on either side or is it in a different plane there too? It's pretty much, it's close to coplanar. If you go to the plan, you can take a look. It's close to coplanar the way it is. Um, if you keep flipping through, I think it's almost the last one. I mean, it, it, it's awkward to put it on a step, I think, but it, it would- doesn't really, It doesn't really work on the step, I mean, frankly. Yeah, it would, uh, it would at least lower it and you'd be able to see most of the door. At, well, this um, is a very transparent gate. I mean, I can't. <laughs> So there you can see that it is almost coplanar with the existing fence. And if you go back to the rendering, it's very hard to argue that this is obscuring any view of the, of the door of the fence. I mean, it's an open fence and it's a fence that continues in exactly this design on the entire north side of West 20th Street at the close and every place else. Right, and this is the same design that goes in front of the church. Right, which is, has a very tall, very ugly gate. You know, every, every single opening into the closest gate. Okay, all right, any other questions? Okay, so commissioners, I am um, starting to unmute you all so we can move to our discussion. Uh, oh, Commissioner Goldblum, would you make a motion to close the hearing? So moved. And Commissioner Lutfi, would you second that motion? Second. All in favor say aye. 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 And the opposed? Okay, and I'm just noting for the record that Commissioner Bland is recused on this item and has not been present for the presentation or the discussion. Sorry. And uh, 
So we'll, we'll uh, begin our discussion now. We have, um, we've looked at the full block. Um, thank you, Abby, for sharing your screen and allowing us to look at Google Street View um, and understand that the north side of the street uh, is all a uh, property that belonged to the geological, uh, the, sorry, the uh, General Theological Seminary. And the uh, south side of the street has a variety of residential building types. Um, so this, you know, when we look at gates in front of buildings um, at, at the steps, I think when we are looking at tall stoops, um, there is a real sense that those stoops um, should be open and that there's quite a distance to the entry. Um, I think an entrance step is a is kind of a different thing. And I think that this is not a row house building. So I think one could think about it differently. Um, we have approved some stoop gates on row houses with tall stoops where they have been a one-off and not part of a row or at the end of a row adjacent to a large building or a commercial thoroughfare. Um, so we have done it in very limited instances um, on uh, tall stoops. But again, I think that this building typology and step um, can be thought about differently if uh, you choose to. And um, so the applicant has designed a fence, a gate that uh, matches the adjacent fencing. And, uh, you know, we've had a lot of discussion about the streetscape at this point. And, I, you know, I would also say that for our discussion on appropriateness, I know we've heard a lot of testimony about need, and that, that is not really part of our discussion. We don't make our findings based on need. Um, and so whether one person feels something isn't safe and another person feels it is, is sort of outside of our purview, we look at the architectural appropriateness of the physical work. So we'll look at it in that context and we'll begin our discussion. Um, Commissioner Chapin, would you like to start this one? Uh, I'm uh, a very mixed mind about this. Uh, I, I feel, I felt in looking at the gate that it was from my point of view, of you the fact that it is matching the the rest of the gate it makes it very ornate and it's it really seems to me a bit awkward um i actually began to think about the idea of having a chain as uh you know michael asked about which might not serve the needs of the uh, owners, but, um, or even two chains conceivably, um, something that just didn't seem to be such a solid, uh, you know, uh, barrier. And <clears throat> yes, I, I do not think that it really, you know, it doesn't hide the building. Let's put it that way. But it just doesn't, I don't feel very comfortable with the, uh, with this approach, this where the gate is because of the necessity of how the steps are. So uh, I'm, I'm not very comfortable with this. So I, I don't think I can approve it, unfortunately. Okay. All right, thank you. Commissioner Goldblum. Okay, thank you. This has been a very interesting morning. Um, I, uh, you know, in, in the spirit of Fred's conversations that he, he started with the previous uh, project that we looked at, there's a direct connection between the two. And it touches on some very basic issues of preservation that perhaps are out of our scope for this relatively modest application, but are nevertheless relevant and in, in the spirit of Fred's conversation this morning, I would, I would offer the following. There's a direct connection between what happened to the townhouse in the village and what's happening here. Homelessness you know, is a result of there not being enough housing. And when you, take, <laughs> when you take two buildings that probably had eight units or 12 units in them as, as a combination, and make it into one, one family house, 
that in and of itself may even be occupied only seasonally is contributing to the homelessness problem in a direct measurable way. Um, and there is some talk, there's lots of talk in, in the preservation world to the extent that I have access to it about preservation of communities as opposed to buildings or not as opposed to buildings as, as an extension of buildings. And we talk, you know, we, we, we do talk about it sometimes and you know, it's worth thinking about, I think as a commission you know, how do, you know, how do, uh, how do we address that? And, you know, we, it's certainly not in our mandate and we can't do it here and it's not appropriate to do so because it's not in our mandate, but it's certainly, there's a good argument for saying it should be in our mandate and that, you know, the, the, the council and the mayor might think about, you know, there's more to preservation than the facades. That said, the, um, the fence here, I agree with Diana that it's perhaps overly ornate and uh, draws a little bit too much attention to itself um, as a decorative element with the, fin with the scroll work and the, the squiggly uh, finials. Uh, I think that if a gate is necessary here, um, you know, we do, we do approve gates in, in, equal, in much more pernicious locations on, on the Upper East Side where they really form a kind of uh, barrier to uh, a sense of the streetscape. Um, I don't think that is the case here. So I think that uh, relative to those uh, very unfortunate fences, this, this is relatively modest. And I think if it were made a little bit more modest, either by lowering the, the top or lightening the pattern uh, in some way, uh, I think that it would, it would be an improvement and could be approved uh, with those modifications. Okay, thank you. Commissioner Chen? Yeah, very interesting uh, discussion. Uh, Michael Goldblum, I, I wish Fred Bland is here to discuss as well. Um, yeah, what, what Fred, uh, I mean, what uh, Michael Goldblum pointed out is obviously not part of the LDC mandate, but it raises a very interesting question because we do know uh, to preserve these structures, uh, uh, it requires human beings efforts as well. And so um, this nation is short currently about 5 million units of housing and it's affecting Canada as well. And so it is a, another topic for another discussion. Um, and I was going to ask the council, uh, Mark, about, you know, historically I noticed that while I'm, I've been here uh, on the commission, I noticed on the Upper East Side, we do approve this type of uh, uh, gates and is there any different standard that is applied to the Upper East Side than it is here? Well, um, I'll jump in and I think, you know, well, Mark, you go ahead. I'll see if I, I want to add anything after you. No, no, Sarah, I mean, I, I think that, I think the first thing we do is we look at things individually um, and we decide on sort of the, you know, in that particular case, in that particular district, looking at both historic situations and, and historic changes that have happened over time. We look at the appropriateness of, of um, offense or whatever. I think the commission has had the most difficulty on you know, uh, uh, groups of row houses with stoops that you know, are, has historically been open and where there's not that many that have been closed off. And, that's, and those are the situations where the commission has looked at it, I think, what the chair said in this case is this is not really a stoop as we have looked at it in different, you know, in those sort of cases where we have had a high degree of concern. And um, so the short answer is that we look at things sort of ind independently. And I think the, uh, the Upper East Side has had a history of a, they were, you know, sort of grander buildings with fences that and many of them had them originally and, and many of them were put them in you know, historically. And so that's where uh, we have looked and taken our cues from. So those don't have much applicability here and our, and our um, sort of concern for, you know, real stoops and gates and stoops of long, you know, rows of, of uh, row houses, it's also not applicable. So that's how I answer that question. Yeah, and I would just say also that, you know, again, you know, we look at, is it part of, is it a part of a row? Does that row have continuous stoops? Is there a rhythm and a pattern that the fence might be detracting from? 
And as Mark said, I think it's been most challenging in those cases with the you know, historic high stoop and there's a row. Um, but we have approved stoop gates on how, not only in the Upper East Side, but other districts, including uh, Greenwich Village, just to the south oh. on stoop gates, um, at, you know, because they're at the end of the row or they're near a commercial thoroughfare where there's a slightly different character or, um, you know, because they're not part of a row. So, and again, again, you know, this, I think you can look at differently because it's a different typology. Yeah, and, and in that regard, I agree with uh, Michael Goldblum's comment about that, you know, I, I think, you know, it, the suggestion of chains or bright lights certainly is not uh, appropriate or, or is, uh, and, and the question then comes back is, the applicant made the statement that the, they, they took effort uh, to design this thing so that it's minimal intrusion with only two posts going into the steps. Uh, and can we make it a, 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 a limited term uh, given ho hopefully the homeless crisis uh, passes over, uh, but uh, you know, uh, I, I, you know, the, the I, I do agree that you know this this is is well thought out, and and I think it is uh, uh, you know with minimal intrusion into the. Uh, yeah, but I, I defer to the the majority to see what what the commission thinks, and if indeed the. the if indeed there's a gate warranted here, then uh, maybe you want to simplify it even, but Michael Goldman. Okay, thank you. Commissioner Lutfi? I somehow lost my, uh, it doesn't matter. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. So I don't have the full screen for some reason or other. Okay, so thanks Michael and Wellington for bringing up that discussion, it's an important one. Um, I think I'm just gonna narrow more now, uh, a little, be a little more focused on the appropriateness of this fence. I do wanna say a lot of times on the Upper East Side, applicants are applying for fences at, that are very tall <laughs> and we are constantly lowering them. Uh, this block has a lot of gated um, homes and some and and some institutions, and I think that it's important to take note of that. And I, I can accept the fact that it's a common condition on this block, and I can appreciate the concerns. Um, of the residents in, in these buildings and their desire to address them in some way. Whether or not it's going to be helpful is, is another matter. Um, I do think that the way it's been designed is pretty sensitive and it's, it doesn't do anything to uh, negatively impact the architecture of the building. And it is fairly transparent um, and minimal. I don't think it's very high and I, I don't think it makes sense to be lower. I, I, I do wanna say that the way most of these other fences are installed, and, I, and this is my only question about what this effectiveness, is that they're really at the front of, you know, they're closer to the front of the property. And so the steps are set back a little bit. It's a different configuration. I appreciate that, but you still might get people sitting on these steps because the fence is actually up, a, you know, a step and a half. So I'm just gonna raise that, but I can support this application for the reasons okay. I said. Thank you. Commissioner Jefferson? Um, well, the existing elements, the step, the doorway, and the surrounding ornament is quite beautiful. This is a unique, I, I don't think I've seen too many places like this in New York, particularly with the step stepping out into the public zone. And, and, uh, it's a, the uniqueness of it should be kept, in my view. I think the fence is nicely designed. It's, it's subtle, has subtle curves. It's nicely done. 
but I don't think it's appropriate here. So I can't approve it, cannot. Thank you. Commissioner Gustafson. Yeah, I, I, uh, I, I will ignore um, all the peripheral comments on social justice. Um, the we're here to decide whether this is appropriate under the standards that we're given. And there are two things I look at there. One is the existing block context. And we saw that there are uh, gated uh, stoops in this um, uh, uh, on this block. Um, numerous, um, and also um, whether it um, obstructs or distracts the visibility of the uh, details in the front of the doorway and uh, whether it detracts from the overall design of the building. And I think this does not. Uh, the fact that it is that uh, a, a step lower um, gives complete visibility, as you can see in the rendering that we're looking at right here in front of us. So um, I think it's appropriate as is. Okay, thank you. Commissioner Shamir Barron. Thanks. Uh, I found the testimony compelling um, in, in that it made a case for 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 why this, um, you know, from the perspective of the neighborhood and the the residents, um, sort of that it feels not effective, that it feels out of place, and I, I just think that the weight of that testimony matters. Um, I, so I, I, I do take it into account. I also think that um, a, a, some kind of a chain would have achieved the same result and would in my mind be more appropriate. However, I actually um, agree with other, some others that um, this does not, the, what is being proposed does not detract from our ability to read the building beyond, to um, understand what was historically there. It doesn't detract. And so I have to say that while it is not in my mind the most appropriate, it is not inappropriate. And so I can approve it. Okay, thank you. And Commissioner Holford Smith, I'm not sure if you were here for enough of this. Yeah, I didn't hear any of the testimony or the presentation. So I, I think I should, should okay. abstain, yeah. Okay. All right, so, and I think, um, you know, I also, I mean, I, I know this is something that we think about a lot and, um, and obviously the neighbors have thought about it a lot as well and care deeply about their street. Um, but I do think for us, for my, for my opinion, this stoop is this entry step, really an entry sequence is really different than, the you know rhythm of high stoops at row houses that you find on many row house blocks, and that thinking about this typology differently is consistent with the stoop gates that we have approved um, in other instances where the context is different and or the end or the building typology or streetscape is different, and so I think because of the many fences on this street, but particularly because this is on the side of the um, former seminary and that much of this street, if not all of it is either walled or gated. Um, and, and the fact that this is a low and transparent fence um, and doesn't detract from the door or door surround, I could go uh, approve this as well. So I think there might be six of us who would approve it if the design uh, were simplified even further, and the um, and the height, overall height of it, be looked at, and maybe the finials or the top rail, as Commissioner Goldblum suggested. So, um, why don't I go ahead and make a motion to follow those suggestions made by the commissioners who felt they could approve it with some lowering and simplification, and we'll do a vote and see where we are. Okay, so in the matter of, I'll have to do three, I guess. So, um, in the matter of docket number, I wonder, Mark, can I read three docket numbers and sort of combine the findings into one? Yes, because it's gonna be the same finding for all of them. The yeah, same and it's the same building description. Okay, great. So in the matter of docket numbers 22-07517, uh, 22 0 7518 
and 22-03633-417-419 and 421 West 20th Street in the Chelsea Historic District, a freestanding faculty house built in 1892 within an ensemble of English Gothic English collegiate Gothic style buildings built largely between 1883 and 1902, designed primarily by Charles Coolidge Haight. This is an application to install ironwork. And I note that the building style scale materials and details are among the features that contribute to the special architectural and historic character of the Chelsea Historic District. I recommend approval with modifications that the proposed work will not eliminate or damage any significant architectural features, that the design of the gate um, will relate to the details, materials, and finish of the adjacent historic ironwork, that the ironwork will be installed at the rebuilt brownstone step and will not impact historic fabric and is easily reversible that the low and transparent nature of the iron gate at these low and wide entry steps will not impede visibility of the historic details of the facade and areaway or detract from the overall design of the building and that the work will not detract from the architectural or historic character of the building, the streetscape or the Chelsea historic district. Um, and this streetscape, which features, features other um, ironwork at steps and entries and areaways. And uh, however, I do recommend that the applicant continue to work with the staff to um, simplify the gate, uh, explore lowering it um, and simplifying the design uh, to make it an even more transparent um, installation. And uh, we'll go with um, Commissioner Gustafson, would you second that motion? Second. All right, Mark, will you call the vote? Chair Carroll. Aye. Uh, Commissioner Bland. Oh, he's recused. He's recused, he's recused sorry. Uh, Commissioner Shamir Barron. Aye. Commissioner Chapin. Nay. Commissioner Chen. Aye. Commissioner Goldblum. Aye. Commissioner Gustafson. Aye. Commissioner Jefferson. Nay. Uh, Commissioner Lutfi. Aye. And um, Commissioner Hol and Holford Smith, you're gonna you're going to um, uh, stay. I think I'm gonna stay in, yeah. Okay. So with six in favor, two opposed, and one abstention, the motion passes. It's approved. Uh, please continue to work with the staff. And um, we are a little behind schedule, so we're going to break for lunch now, um, and we will return uh, and do the final two items after lunch. So um, we'll come back at 1.20. So we'll ask all members of the public to voluntarily exit the meeting now so that you can easily get back in if you plan to return um, after the lunch break at 1.20. Commissioners, you just need to turn your audio and video off. We'll see you then. Thank you. Sonia, we just cut the live.